Hello and welcome to the Liggy Cast. This is the Giant Bomb Community's Gear Wars 2 podcast for the week of June 22nd. I'm your host, Sulker Fest Cynic, and joining me today is Nubarama. Yeah, I am joining <laughs> self confessed Cynic today. I like the pause on that. Rawson? And I am joining self confessed Cynic and Nubarama. Tarkeen? Hello. And for the- <laughs> oh, you broke it! Damn you it. broke it! <laughs> Combo and- breaker! And then for the first time, another Australian on the show, so joining me and Tarkeen as the Australian Lincoln Cast vets, Enchanted Echo. Hello. Hello. It's joining the resistance. Australian resistance. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Lincoln Lincoln <laughs> Force resistance. What are we resisting? What do you think what in your opinion, what does Lincoln Force resist? I don't know, Australian lag. Good podcasting. <laughs> Legitimacy. Quality. <laughs> quality. It's I clearly like that Australians one. against the world. <laughs> <laughs> clearly, no, it's 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 Commonwealth, because we've got what, three three com- four Commonwealthers on the show this week. And one American, so American. I don't. I don't know what that means at all. What's this Commonwealth <laughs> bullshit you're talking about? <laughs> Spoken like a true. Anyway, what have you been doing this week, Rosen? What country are you from? Not Commonwealth. Uh, what have I been doing this week? Um, <laughs> I've been playing games and going to work and. Today, I got to try out The Secret World, uh, that new MMO by Funcom. Oh, if if the audience doesn't know where Durin is this week, he's actually doing a live stream while we're recording of that game. So I I think, what, Rawson, do you have something to say about it? It's not offensively bad, but it's just... It's it sounded so, offens- it sounded offensively bad when you took when you, and I heard you playing it's it. It's just it's just it's so fucking boring. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happens, and every <laughs> single quest has to have a cinematic cutscene, as if as if if they're they're trying really really hard to make me give a shit, but they're just forcing it down my throat, so it creates the opposite reaction where I just don't care about anything involved in the game all right so, well, a, lot, a lot of games have had a lot of cutscenes, but they usually are fine because you, you generally i find they're engaging because generally good writing and good voice acting like is, is that not the case here or the the voice act i haven't seen any good instances of voice <laughs> acting and it's just i just don't i they can't make me give a shit Oh, man. So it's just kind of annoying. I, I would just, I would rather be able to just walk up and just accept a quest and just that's it. I just have the quest. Have you, I don't have right. to. Have you learned any secrets? I don't. I don't have to. I don't have to try have any secrets. Skip this that's a good question. Have, have you learned any secrets? You, you found out what the uh, the first hymn a dude was going to sing on the weekend. That was it. yeah. It was five seven six. That was you know obvious. that that hymn that's. <laughs> That's totally obvious, guys. <laughs> Wait, okay, run me through your secret world experience. What did you do today? I, I made a character. Uh, she ate a lightning bug and got superpowers from it. And then Is she, that like an allergic reaction? I guess. <laughs> and then she went <laughs> she went down into the sewers in New York. And then she found out that the Illuminati were there. But they didn't, like, kill her. They Instead, now she's, like, a member of the Illuminati. So they Wait, sent why did her... she go into the sewers? I forget. I think she might have been trying to. She was a child prostitute. Ew. No, no, she was a lady. Is Jay Z in this? Oh. So just a prostitute. <laughs> is Jay? Is Jay? Can no, you confirm actually, the presence actually, of Jay-Z? actually, my character is most assuredly not a prostitute. She is actually conservatively dressed compared to most other characters. <laughs> <laughs> Which is to say, she's wearing some clothing. Wait, I know something human. Like, is this an MMO? Did you play with humans, or did you just pretty much? Th- there are humans there, but I didn't do anything with them because fuck that. <laughs> I don't. Haven't you I don't care enough. Go Wars Two. Haven't you learned anything? Playing well, with people is fun. Well, yeah, because there I don't have to. I don't have to like go. Hello, would you like to join a group with me? <laughs> you would. <laughs> Well, what is your character type? Are you a tank, a DPS, or a healer? 
Oh, oh that God. is good, for we need a tank. And now I shall invite you into our group, and then we shall share our quest, so then we can all do the quest, so then we can do the next quest, so then we can do the quest after that, and then eventually we'll be able to raid against the raid bosses and get the best items in the game until they patch wait, it. Wait, wait, wait. Did... To be fair, you can't really confirm whether any of the things you said above, aside from quests, are actually in this game, right? Because you only played like twenty minutes, right? I played. Oh, no, like, it was more than I twenty. Minutes. Like, it was like three hours. hours. Three hours. Holy shit! Did and you it's... have fun? No. <laughs> Am I gonna so wait, go wait, back wait. to it? You played Probably. three hours and you did not have fun. <laughs> no, I didn't go back have to fun. it. God damn! He's such a masochist. Oh my I, god! I I hate myself a lot. <laughs> What is your reasoning? That's... Why would you go back to the game? Because he can for the weekend? He gets because sexual pleasure from bringing himself pain. It's that simple. Because I want to have... I want to then be able to say that this game is a piece of shit and have, like, evidence to back it up. Because every single time you ever say an MMO is a piece of crap, you always get players who are like, No, that's not true! Or, Oh, you didn't play it enough! Three hours isn't nearly enough to have fun in this video game! <laughs> right. Yeah, okay, gotcha. Oh, fuck off! <laughs> I, I had the same problem with the Stupid older mentality. public. I had yeah. the same problem with the older public where people actually accused me, even on the Giant Bomb forums, they accused me of not even actually playing the beta, even though I had fucking streamed it and I had backups of the streams to prove it. Wow, okay. Wait, even apparently, on, apparently, apparently, a really I, laid back community, but. What? That's crazy. Oh, God, yeah. It's something about MMOs. I disagree, just people but go okay. Nuts. <laughs> Well, to be fair, you only really troll the off-topic and shitty parts of the forums. I don't troll. Uh, wait, I was going to say a bad word there. I was going to say a bad <laughs> word. <laughs> I didn't. I started, but I didn't. You're going to um, scare away all of the listeners. Are you going to scare away all of Oh, God. The mumble server but, of politics is getting weird. Okay, okay, okay. But, anyway, yeah. game's fucking boring. Don't buy it. That that's the Rawson review. I'll see what Duran thinks next week because he's live streaming it now, uh, and hopefully he can get some into. But this is a Guild Wars Two podcast, so I'll move on. Really, really, I kind um, of forget that by the first thirty <laughs> minutes into the. I try show. to get about uh, twenty minutes of random discussion before Guild Wars Two. It's a bit t- yeah. like I think it's a bit hard. Well, you to say that ro- before Guild Wars Two, but then after that twenty minutes, it's still random discussion. Oh, I've been uh, playing. I've been playing some DCS A Ten C. That's actually a good game, and I recommend it. So, Nubarama, what have you been playing this week? Uh, well, I have been playing Men of War and Arma 2 Operation Arrowhead. Did you play Elizabeth or whatever it was as well? What's what's Elizabeth? What, what the other, whatever. Victoria, and, he's talking about Victoria. Victoria, Victoria oh, that's God. the one. Elizabeth. <laughs> yeah, I know. Come on, dude, that's some game I don't give a shit about. Just, for some, like, so basically my exams are over and, and my summer vacation has started. And I have Aww. actually... I, I don't remember what's happened in the last week anymore. It's just, it's just a, <laughs> a blur of video. Blur. Did you get out of the house? Yeah. Um, I might have. I don't remember. <laughs> I think God I opened it. the door to let my dog into the backyard, and then I closed the door. That's I think so. I might have, so I the think five I, minutes I, I before the show, you opened the in. door for your dog. Who was outside? No, you didn't even go outside to you. You opened the door for your dog to come in. Oh, Five minutes no, no, the show. No, no. For the I, rest of the week, you did absolutely no, no, nothing. No, I, no, I, I had to, what is it called, go outside really quick to get KFC and then come back. Oh, you have a KFC near where you live? <laughs> I have a McDonald's just yeah. around the corner as well. I, got, oh, I gotta drive like, I gotta drive like half an oh, no, hour I, I to get Oh, no, I drove there. I drove there. I See, I've got a Mickey D's, uh... Two minutes Don't drive. Say Don't I know, say right? A KFC on. around five minutes drive and a uh, equivalent of a Burger King about. That was uh, an equivalent six, of a Burger King. We call it Hungry Jacks. I think. <laughs> Green Jack. Damn straight. <laughs> it's like an Australian like, <laughs> Burger King. Because like, awesome. they, they were previously owned by Burger King, but then they like, split off. They branched off into their old, own thing. And they do better burgers. Um, anyway, so that, that's what you've been doing this week, New? Well, I mean, what else? Let me let me try to. Rem- you, I, I have nothing slept. spectacular. I, I'm sure that I, no I've, one gives a shit. <laughs> I, I read a book, or I'm starting to read a book. Ooh, what book? Called The Flashman. It's quite good. Really? Um. Yeah. It was recommended to me by a giant bomb person. Nice. I'm, I'm thinking uh, quite of rereading and um, racist, but hey. Well, what kind of well, wait? Well, what time is that for yet? Okay, we can do it. Um. Well, what kind of books are you into, noob? 
Um, I'm, I mostly read nonfiction. I'm not a big fiction person, but um, sometimes I like to stray into fiction territory and read fiction books. But this right. is historical fiction, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, wait, I, don't I know. guess. Just, well, what's the book about? Just, just, just do the plug yeah, for the book. Okay, so basically, Flashman is, um, is a character who is like an anti-hero, basically. All and right. he and he finds himself all in all of these crazy situations because he's like a complete dick. He sleeps around with like other people's wives and stuff like that. And he and he joins the military and he just gets himself into these crazy situations. And it's basically that kind of book. Wait, so it's historical fiction in what way? Um, it's it's real events and real characters, but there it's a mix of fictional characters and real characters. Okay. So right. it's it's based it's in a backdrop of real world events, but right. it's a, so it's a historical yeah. novel and it's pretty comedic. It's quite okay. funny. I like cool. it. Um, Set in 1840, actually. Right, I, I prefer fantasy. I'm, I'm a oh, huge fantasy you buff. Nerd. I'm the biggest nerd when it comes to books. I'm currently thinking oh. of rereading Monster Hunter International. If anyone's like, heard of that I, series of I, books, if I could recommend a book, I would recommend The Cold War. Um, by Jeremy Isaacs and Taylor Downing. That's a good introduction to the subject. Oh, fuck you. I'm going to pants right. you, you right. fucking nerds. <laughs> <laughs> Turkeen, what kind of books do you like? Um, Is he here? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what kind of books do I books? like? If you, uh, like that genre? was a transition into what you've been doing this week, but if you can't answer the question, just tell me what you've been doing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, on Tuesday, I finished my exam, so since then, okay, I've been yes. playing quite a bit more Skyrim. Um, oh, I've nice. played a bit of Daisy. Dun, 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 the armor Do you like Daisy? What? Do you like Daisy? It is stressful. <laughs> I mean, DayZ. Uh, Daisy. Yeah, sure. Well, DayZ is how it, It's made by Americans, isn't it? It's a ca- no, it's made by no, the it's Czech. New Zealander. Oh, so it's DayZ. No, Czech. I thought it was Czech. What? Like Czech Republic. If we're not informed about this topic, we should just leave no, because and he, pronu- he pronounces it, it as Day Z. So oh, okay, all he's pronouncing it wrong. Yeah, he's pronouncing it wrong. It's Day Z. So Day Z <laughs> stressful, is it? I hate you people yes. so much. It, it, it's all survival. <laughs> nice. That well, it's like survival against people and zombies, right? Like, have you done multiplayer or did you just stick to um? It is multiplayer. You have to. Okay, yeah, so there's, there's no like, aren't there any friendly servers where you can't? There's no like player killing. No, there it's no. all player killing. <sighs> it's all. Player it's like one unified server structure because it's persistence among all servers, so they can't like. I hate people, as like enough as it is, without giving me more reasons to hate people no, by playing. But, games. but, but the, the thing, thing is, is, like, imagine a real zombie apocalypse. If you saw like a dude with lots, it's who's completely loaded. You wouldn't kill him. No, I would. Because I'm a I good person, or try to be. I would kill him and take his women as a slave. Yeah, but we know you're like a, a pseudo evil Batman who's also got some weird like anger issues and political. What the heck? <laughs> what the hell does Batman have to do with him? Yeah, no, it, it's, don't Batman worry, don't Batman. worry. There's a backstory to it. Um, There's a backstory. Yeah. I don't know about this backstory. Yeah, no, you do. We just didn't. You don't remember when we established that you were an evil Batman. Anyway, I, I am. Echo, what have you been doing this week? Uh. I've been playing some Crater, which is pretty cool. Pretty oh, the, the, that's the... Was it Czech? I uh, think Swedish. 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 Yeah, Fat Shot. Yeah. Uh, the, the Swedish Diablo 2 slash many other genres mashed into one game. Yeah, right? it's a bit of a mishmash, to be honest. But... Do you like it? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. It's The dungeons are kind of... I'm kind of sick of dungeons in general, so it's kind of hard to get excited about, you know, crawling Wait, did, into Wait, did you play D3? Yeah, well, I'm currently playing through that at the same time as well, so it's kind of oh, polarizing between man. the two. Yeah, well, I, exactly. I, c- I can't really see... Because I just finished my stint of Diablo 3 um, about two weeks ago, just before the last beta, and I, I can, I, I'm over that kind of game for the next couple of years, I have to say. I cannot... Like, I looked at Kratom, I'm like, hey, that looks cool. The Arshad looks interesting. kind of looks like Borderlands-y, but I just can't do it. I'm sorry. You, your that... mind will probably change when Torchlight 2 comes out. No, because I didn't even play the first Torchlight. Really? Yeah. Okay. Like, I, I've, heard, I was like, I've heard some really good things about Torchlight 2, like better oh, no, than I, I, Diablo 3. Yeah, I've heard that the first Torchlight was better than Diablo 2. Uh, the, uh, I think that's a bit of an over-exaggeration, but Torchlight... Two has multiplayer, so you can very yeah. very well be that Torchlight Two is better than Diablo Three. I wouldn't be surprised, but 
that's just what I've heard from people who are, who've uh, played the beta. I think the that developers yeah, more open to make you know big changes because it's not their you know darling game of whatever however long that yeah. series has been going. So. And, and they're expected to be different. That, that's that's the, the beauty of Torchlight. Like they, but their fans Diablo want clone. them to be different to Diablo Three. Yeah. Why would you do, change a clone? The clone's supposed to be exactly the same with a different name. I hate you. I hate you. <laughs> well, I, I still don't know why I get you on every week. I, I, oh, I, I remember. I remember. News. I Let's move you. on to news. Let's segue. Let's use that as a boat. Um, I don't know why I said boat. News, Nubarama, uh, bring us through it. Do it for us. Run us through the news topics, okay, and then we'll get into the discussion. The news. All right. yep. In Guild Wars 2 news this week, a stress test was announced for Wednesday, June 27th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Earlier this week, Kristen Cox announced that the character dies are no longer unlocked in an account basis. Instead, one must unlock up to 400 colors for each of their individual characters. Upon the announcement, she elaborates, Customized dyes should look, should be something that denotes your character's progress, like better looking or elaborate gear. You, you, you were you were going so well with this, but then you just fucking <laughs> torpedoed it. <laughs> more time on your character. They grow and gain access to more customization options. If we make dies account-based, this progression will only happen on one character. On Monday earlier this week, a private video was uploaded uploaded to the official Guild Wars 2 YouTube page which was titled Ratasu, Capital of the Asura in Guild Wars 2. Could this suggest an appearance of the Asura in next month's beta weekend event? Guild Wars 2 peripherals have been announced from SteelSeries. Articles included were a headset, a mouse, and three mouse pads. You misspelled three. Yeah, I did. Confirmed in Reddit, ask me anything, an item previewer is in the works so one can preview an item on their character before making a purchase. All right, so th- that was actually pretty good. You didn't fail as much as I thought you would, even though you did stumble. In the wow, way. thanks. Thanks for your confidence in me, dickhead. <laughs> Fuck you too. <laughs> well, you still didn't nail it. So my confidence, or my level of confidence was fully justified. <sighs> I, I need I need to do like a different person because it's a quote and I'm like uh, it's like a video because you don't. But you switch from English male to X unknown female. <laughs> that was no, no, no female. X that was a female? man in drag. Mark? That was a drag queen. Oh oh clearly was that, was that what you're aiming for? Yeah. Right. That was such a good you're, you're being quite rude to Miss Kristen Cox. <laughs> All right, so. The first discussion topic of the week, stress test starting Wednesday 27th from 10 a.m. Oh, yeah. 24 hours a day. Oh, right. Nothing. When I have great. work. Oh, great. That's well, my employment. That's is the thing, chumps. right? Um, well, well I knew. When, when are you going to be, what time is going to be your time when this happens? You're, you're not going to have anything um, to do, right? You're between exams and let's stuff. Let's see. Holidays. There, that's, that's like... That's like uh, add two hours or three hours. So it's like time. one to it's, it's one p.m. to five p.m. All right, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you're gonna be there, right? Of course. What am I gonna do? Not play <laughs> Guild Wars two. <laughs> Still be silly. You're funny. Yeah. For us, it's like uh, what was it? It was three a.m. to seven a.m. Yeah, well, one one a.m. to five a.m. That makes for sense. Me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To, to is... put everything in perspective, um. Chad Deck is from Perth, and we're from Sydney, all in Australia, so... Oh, man. Are you going to make it, Chad? Um, Actually, Sydney's a city in Ontario. <laughs> Fuck you. I might, I, might play out, it, I might play out the first... Of course, of course, by city, he means a tiny little remote tundra village. No, it's like a, all Canadian it's cities. It's a mining city in Ontario. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. I, I might play out the first hour. I don't know. But it's a pretty thank, awkward thank time. Thank you for bringing us back to top. <laughs> For, for an hour. I, I don't know, because I've heard... Well, I'll just go, Rawson, you're going to be working. Noob, you're going to be playing it. I'm not. I'm going to be sleeping. Tarkin, you're going to go to it? That's going to be Thursday morning. I think I'll something make like it. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you serious? <laughs> don't you have uni or something? No, you finished your final exam. I just said so. I finished my exams. Yeah, so, so you're going to be... Oh, I'm nothing. sorry. It's not Sydney. It's Sudbury. I don't know why I got Sydney from. Oh, there, there, is, there are multiple Sydneys in the States. I don't, there's, 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 multiple. there's no Sydney in Ontario. I'm sorry. I don't know if there's any Sydney's around here. Oh, fuck. 
Actually, Sydney, Canada hosts the largest fiddle in the world. We have Baltimore. No, we don't care. <laughs> oh. Baltimore's pretty cool, guys. No, the largest fiddle in the world sounds interesting. It just got nothing to do with Guild Wars 2. Yeah. Like and we're off to 20 minutes now, so we should totally actually stay on topic. Anyone want to come over here to Baltimore? It's pretty cool, I guess. Oh, Wait, are you in Baltimore? I didn't know you were in Baltimore. About Good Morning Baltimore. Anyway, um, but yeah, so what they've, they, there's un, unconfirmed, I'd say, um, elements of this. So a lot of it has been uh, pretty much subject to criticism because people are like, hey, it's from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. PDT. I'm American. I can't be there. For example, like Rawson, um, he's working and stuff like that. A lot of people complaining, especially I think it blew up on Guild Wars 2 Guru. Uh, but the main thing is Arena has been pretty vocal about the fact that this stress test, unlike... The last one, for example, is more targeted towards the UK and EU listeners and players. So uh, it's, it's going to be good for them because, it's, again, um, unconfirmed. Oh, do you have anything to say? Oh, can I just mention something real quick? If As of June 22nd, there is a 12,000 file update on Guild Wars. So if you, oh, really? if you have really slow internet, you might want to get going on that now. That's Well, you can't, you can't tell the size because it doesn't really tell you when you start down there. Right, but 12,000 is what, like... The files. Uh, so it's probably going to be at least because over a gig. As it's downloads. Yeah, but it's going to be over right. a gig, probably. Yeah. Like, most likely. Um, so yeah, start downloading now if you want to be there for the stress test, I guess. Um, I don't know whether... Yeah, and they keep your characters from the last beta. Um, oh, unconf- again? All right, good. Yeah, I'm assuming um, they'll keep it for the next beta weekend then. How long till they wipe them, do you reckon? Until they wipe characters? I, I think... Well, I, I want to get onto this discussion shortly, but just to round things out. Um, so they, they're aiming it towards the um, y- European guys because the last beta was uh, pretty late at night and, or at a weird time for them. So um, for the guys complaining about the timing for this one, just uh, keep it in your minds that... Hey, there's more people out there who play Guild Wars 2 than us to the US guys. Aside from that, yeah, but uh, none of them matter. Pieces of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Arena do try to take care of the EU guys. They have dedicated. Oh, EU they're not terrible at it. They're just not that great at it. But this well, is a good, hey, better than most. Martin Kirstein is pretty damn awesome. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, anyway, um, the the unconfirmed part, which I was trying to get to, was they're repeating the um, ending event, which we'll be talking about later this episode. So if you missed that, if you missed that last time and you're in the EU, um, or if you have no, nothing to do like New Barama, just check it out. It'll be fun. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I missed it I, last time. Yeah, I, I, I very exams. much recommend it. And, and I'll and I'll. Do you want me to spoil it towards? Or do you do you want me to just not uh, go into that this episode, or do you want? Uh, to... I mean. If it's if it's magical, then to please uh, it, try to restrain yourself in like de- ex- describing the magic. Because okay, I don't I want the magic it's to pretty be much awesome from start to end. So I've yeah, let's just say we won't discuss it this show. Yes. Um, the event will be yeah next Thank week, you. so you can you can experience it and then we can discuss it next show, I guess. And Duran will be here, and he was um, there at the event as well, so we can t- discuss it then. This week we'll stick to WWE. Before that. Um, and Chad brought up a great topic. Uh, how, okay, so they're not, they're not wiping your characters for this beta, right? Um, they didn't wipe it for the last one, and our characters have been here from the first beta weekend event. So when do you guys think that they'll actually wipe the characters? Do you think they'll wipe the characters? How many betas do you think are left before the game comes out? Um, we'll start with the first one. Do you guys think they're going to wipe the characters for the next beta? No. Anyone? No? No. no they won't wipe not. it. No. I'll bet one copper coin that they will not wipe their characters heavy roller man <laughs> high stakes i mean i know you, you well, what are you basing that on like, what do you why do you think they're not gonna wipe them noob well if they're keeping it for the stress test i feel like this is just a repeat of the last you know stress test in terms of like what it is no no, not, not the stress wipe. test i mean the next beta oh yeah, yeah but like so you know they kept their characters for the stress test, even though they said they'd wipe their char- the characters right. entirely after the end of the beta. I feel like they're just gonna do that again, just like keep those characters and then oh we'll wipe it. Well, they never even said they'd wipe it. Last they never, time, never said they? They, they they consistently wiped it for the closed and press betas, but they never right. wiped it for the opens. Exactly. Or so the I don't, I don't think opens. So. so do, do I, you I don't think see that... a need for them to wipe it? So like, even if they like bringing the two the new races and stuff, uh, you don't think they'll wipe it? Well, even if they bring in the new races. Do you think people are just going to play the same stuff if they don't add new content to the other zones? I feel like people will create new stuff. What, like if the, they now you're introduce... support the argument they do what? Right. 
Oh, no, you... no, because if I, I would assume that if they do introduce new races, like they wouldn't be adding in stuff to the exist, like content to the existing areas. They'd just be adding in those new races. And I'm assuming most people would go create new characters and try out those new races. I don't know, because I was level 25 or something, right? When I finished the last right. beta. Um, I would, I can definitely see myself spending more time and getting him to 30 to try Ascalon Catacombs. So hopefully they've fixed it. Um, then and I'd, I'd miss out time with the new race, for example, if they brought in the Azura. Right. Uh, I, I think it's, there's a valid argument for wiping if they're bringing in the new races, which we'll discuss later um, or maybe now. Um, that to wipe characters because it, it would allow people to try different things. For example, some people who have um, done only one character this entire time, I think what uh, Tarkin has pretty much only stuck with his guardian. Wiping the characters will encourage him to try out something different, right? Right. Which could, which could be useful. Like more things can be tested. Rawson, do you or, also or thought they would get mad? Do, do you I still yeah, think I, they will? I, I don't. I don't think they will. They'll do it. I mean, they didn't do it last time, but uh, I, I think they still want. I th I think probably they they want more people to invest more in a character and go ahead and get a little bit further at least in the game as a bit more of a, a teaser type thing because I didn't hit the max level I didn't hit level thirty five in the well, last thirty five was not the max level someone got to yeah, yeah, that was not the max level but the max level for content max level for content oh, um, yeah, was around right. thirty five okay. Uh, yeah, so I, I didn't. Right. I didn't hit thirty-five, and I would have liked to. So, I guess. I guess mostly, I'm hoping they don't wipe it, just so I can attempt <laughs> to hit that cap. Yeah, and, and just to round it up, Enchanted and Tarkin, do you guys think that they'll wipe the characters for the next beta? Uh, I think they they will once they introduce a new race because they can't keep. Yeah, I, they can't keep introducing yeah. new high level content because they're not. They don't want to show off the. Because that cap will increase, they'll probably show it in level 40 zone next big actual update because, you know, I'm going to keep moving up. But I don't really care because I can just talk to an NPC and get level to whatever level they choose. Wait, because I'm you on can a still special do this? list. Yeah. Oh, you bastard. <laughs> There's an NPC in the game. What? Everyone can reach, apparently. Can well, anyone can talk to him? Anyone can talk to him, but I've, I've got all appeal to try and do it and it hasn't worked for them, so... Oh right! So Wait, it's only does this man have this magic key that opens yeah he's, him he's into in the new he's in the Australian press list. <sighs> so yeah, let's give you a load of gear. And... I envy you, <laughs> jealousy, Jesus. So I'm level thirty-seven, oh. and I've played like barely any PV. So. Oh fuck you! I hate oh, you so much. you bastard! <laughs> I worked my way All up to thirty-six. <laughs> I worked my way up to thirty-six. <laughs> I was uh, bleeding out of my eyes from all that time I put into Guild Wars so I can make my Guardian <laughs> level 35. And then guess what you did? You just Let's negated to all of that effort. You son of a bitch. <laughs> That's a great point. Like, um, For example, I think that's a great idea to wipe existing characters, um, even though I like my human warrior, for the next beta weekend event, assuming they put in new races... Because it'll encourage people to try new things. For example, like Rawson, if he's already level 20-something, like me, um, we, we probably push through so we can experience the higher-level content. Um, also, yeah, Enchanted, really good point. Do you want them to start putting in level 45, level 50 content to the beaters? I, 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 wouldn't it be spoiling that for the game? There are only 80 levels in this game. Like, Noob, would you, would you want them to put higher-level content still? Um, yeah. Well, not, <laughs> not just they, because you, you kind of want to play more girls add, too? Um, not when they add the new stuff. Yeah, like, I'd rather the... they just fucking release the game already. Yep. Right. Come on, fuck your arena net. I don't have that much time. Yeah, I do, but yeah, whatever. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Come on, okay. arena net. I could die next yeah, week. Yeah, I could die while, while this game is <laughs> they've, they've probably, on limbo. Probably have been people who have died who are waiting for the game. Yeah. And then they died. Oh, That's wow. That's yeah, a think morbid, about that. the, probably true those point. Those lives five years that you... Jesus, way to bring it down. <laughs> but true, I, but I, true. It's true. I was just, I was just trying right. to bring up the fact that I got to get my wisdom teeth removed next week, and I could oh. fucking die no, of anesthesia. You could die of pain. It's fucking painful. Oh man. <sighs> way to do it. Um, die. Wait. Think so of would, those lives, ain't it? Think would you guys? Them. Okay. If it presented the option of continuing the current characters. There being level forty-five content and not um, having the new races, or having the new races but everything's wiped. What would you guys choose? Uh, Enchanted. I'll have the new races because I want to play 
at a Sura, so yeah. Oh yeah, damn straight. Well, Worsen hates a Sura. Worsen, what do you think? Do you want forty five or any races? I want I want to kick a Sura in the fucking teeth. <laughs> I just like the animation. <laughs> that does not answer the question. <laughs> but I still answered something. Yeah, you did. But do you want forty five or do you want new races? I I don't know. Um I would probably want to check out like at least the Silvari area. Oh that'd yeah. Be, yeah, Silvari are interesting. Cool. Yeah. Um I, the yeah, is number, be, two, number two. I, I do kinda want to check out the plant elves. <laughs> They are not <laughs> elves. That. Sexy. Yes, yeah, so there you go. Elves. You are desecrating the Silvari. There you go. See, the, 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 the Guild Wars 2 Defense Force, represented by Tarkin there, um, disagrees with that inclination. That... I'm, just, I'm just saying, the other look like elves. <laughs> they're plants. They don't look like elves. They're not elves. I actually they're don't plants. Think, they look nothing I actually like legitimately elves. think they don't look like elves. They're not tiny, and they don't work in Santa's workshop, so they're not elves. No, God those damn. aren't elves. Those are just slave labor forces. <laughs> <laughs> They they keep them small by by systematically malnourishing them. Uh, well known fact. Tarkin, that's, would you that's, 45 that's, why he, in... that's why Santa has to go work up on the North Pole. That way he can avoid any sort of labor laws. No one's gonna go up there to enforce labor laws on a bunch of slaves. <laughs> Tarkin, forty five or like, uh, new races. To be honest, new races, but I don't really like the Asura. Yeah, oh, like man, you guys have no taste. I, Asura look cool, I guess. <laughs> the Silvari have uh, better than the Asura. Oh, yeah, well, the Silvari are legitimately... I think, I'm pretty sure everyone likes their character design at minimum. Maybe not the race itself, but the character design is legitimately good. I, I'm pretty sure it's been universally appraised. Um, oh, sorry, praised, not appraised. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I personally also think that I'd prefer my characters to be wiped. I, I know... That even if they introduce the Silvari and Asura, I'm still going to stick with my human warrior till at least level 30 so I can try some dungeons. Um, I'd vastly prefer if they let you start the new characters and maybe at the end of the um, starting areas put an NPC there to bump you up to 30. Um, for normal people, instead of just the press, to let us do both, have like both sides of the deal. Um, give us new characters and let us check out the dungeons and stuff. That would be the optimal solution. I hope they do it. Um, but we'll get to speculation on the next beta in a bit. Nubarama, uh, and for those who've forgotten, and I want I, I want to hear it again. Can you read out the second news topic, please? Oh, with or without the voice? With, please. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Earlier this week, Kristen Cox announced that character dies are no longer unlocked in an account basis. Instead, one must unlock up to 400 colors for each of the individual characters. Upon the announcement, she elaborates. Now, do I? What do I do here? Uh, anything you want. Just, just, just keep going <laughs> with your current voice. Customize, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> customize die should be something that denotes your character's progress, like better looking, more elaborate gear. As you spend more time on your character, they grow and gain access to more customization options. If we make die character dies account based, this progression will only happen on one character. I call this bullshit. I call this. Bullshit. Yeah. yeah, fuck you, Kristen Cox, you transvestite. <laughs> oh my god, okay. <laughs> that is mean. That was more than I expected. I don't even know I'm what sorry. she looks like. I'm sorry. <laughs> or, or what her gender is. <laughs> Alright, New Barama, what do you think of this statement? Why? Why do I need to unlock 400 dies on every fucking character? Uh, would you though? Why? Like, Would you even care? Uh, <sighs> yes, I... I my character needs to be the most fabulous character in all of Azeroth. <laughs> Azeroth. Azeroth. <laughs> Whoops. Azeroth. Uh, yep. Sorry, Tyria. Tyria. In, okay. in all of Asura's wrath. In all of Asura's <laughs> wrath. <laughs> That's what I heard, actually, that I realized. Um, yep. Um, would, wait, why, would you why would they seriously? Do this? Like, is that really necessary? What does this add to the game by forcing you to unlock? <sighs> They're going to make you pay to unlock all of them. On all characters. Oh yeah, that definitely. Oh yeah, because you can pay for die. Isn't that a bit shady? You can pay for random die packs. Yeah. Random die packs. You can't even pay for like individual dies. Well, I, so I'm assuming it, you it's like it's like double. paying for booster cards, except you look better. Unlike <laughs> yeah. Magic: The Gathering, where yeah. the amount of Magic: The Gathering cards you have, the worse you look as a human being. <laughs> 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 By the way, I have two shoe boxes full. <laughs> Hell yeah. No, I, I don't. I, I, I never don't have to. any magic cards. Magic the Gathering. But, 
No, I, I, you bring up a good point. Like, this is purely cosmetic. Like, I, I can see, and I, I personally, I'll, I'll get into what my thoughts are. Um, but, uh, yeah, like, like, in the end, this doesn't affect you too badly because you do start off with some dyes and some pretty good ones. Like, you get some a metallic gray and you get, uh, like, reds and stuff out, out of the box. So you, with all the new characters you start, you start off with a basic uh, set I'm of I'm pretty dyes. sure it's based off of your profession because apparently it's, like, roughly 20-ish uh, default colors for each one. Oh, yeah. yeah and, and, and so, yeah, there you go. But either way, you start with, like, a bunch of default colors. And the only things you're really unlocking is, like, the special stuff. So the, the extra 400. Well, Turkey, what, what, are you, what are your thoughts on this? Well, the die seems to drop more often than die in Guild Wars 1. So... Do they? No. I, I, do no. I only picked up, like, one die. Yeah, I I've only picked up, like, up, like three dies. Some people had, like... In Guild Wars, I'd have, like, a stack of... Like yellow green dyes that no, go for like you wouldn't have negative six in the time gold. we've been playing. You wouldn't have six. You'd have like three. <laughs> but we only spent like about one and a half days on PVA. Some people uh, have like, like some people have like hundreds. Like they have screenshots showing them all off. Whoa! It's but, it's, but how long do they like? I don't know. I don't. Are they killing particular? I don't know what they're doing. But uh, yeah, they're, and are they trading? What? Like, can you buy yeah, dyes off the trading post? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what they're doing. Um, the rare ones like, look pretty. Can you confirm? The rare ones look pretty lame to me. Like at least with Guild Wars, you had <laughs> black and white, and you, even though you might not think oh, yeah. it looks cool outside of the game, when you're you know, when you're in in it, you you understand. You know, yeah, white, white dye is cool. There's a, there's a reason For why goddamn black dye. Yeah, there's a reason why black dye was 5k. It was like on most arm because again, like they they try to make the armors. Um, reflect the dye you're using. It is not just like a small change; it's usually quite like a significant one. So when you put on a black dye and like some of the original Guild Wars One armors, it's like the only way to roll because it looks right, like so you, badass. If, sometimes the black dye costs just as much or more than the armor you're wearing. Yeah. It's insane. <laughs> like a fully decked out set of black dye—that's like fifty k. Mm. Yeah, it's like ten, it's like five k. You're, you're reminding me. You're reminding no, me of uh, back when I played Ultima Online and pure black dye was a rare item and it was worth a lot of money because otherwise your black dye wasn't really black it was more like a dark gray <laughs> wait so that did i ask your opinions rosen what are your thoughts i like ultima online that was a pretty <laughs> cool game <laughs> I before it. before ea came along and fucking ruined it like they do with everything god damn it Wait, so, so do, do you think they should have uh, the account unlocked dyes like they originally said they I, would? Because the thing is, a lot of the anger comes from the fact that two years ago, there was a, uh, when they first, I think it was about two years ago, one, one and a half years, one year ago, something like that, um, they did an article on the Guild Wars 2 blog, which essentially was them laying out what their plans were for dyes, and they told you about like, the hot swapping system, you didn't have to buy like um, usable dyes, you just unlock it, and you can use it. And back then, they their line was... Dies are going to be account based. You don't have to worry about it. Once you get a new die, it's now unlocked across all your characters and all that fancy, awesome stuff. So that's where a lot of the outrage comes from. But like, do, do you remember the article, Rosen? Or, or what, what do you think? I don't. I don't remember that article. But, so they're um, liars. They they went back on their word. Ba- they changed their minds. I, I I don't like having to repeat the same sort of stuff over and over on a character. And I know it's it's ultimately just cosmetic, but. It would still be nice just to be able to... It would be more convenient, ultimately, if I only had to, you know, unlock a die once. Because, yes, it's cosmetic, and I shouldn't give a shit about it, but at the same time, like, that can be twisted around and work in the opposite right. manner. Where it's, yes, it's something small and minute, so I shouldn't have to worry about it. I shouldn't have to care about it. It should be more convenient. I guess, but like Enchanted, what what are, you, what are your thoughts on because their their counter argument to Rawson's statement is um, customized die. Like if, if you get the top level dies on one of your characters, you're just gonna dump the Mystic Golden die of awesomeness on your next character, wouldn't you? Like what what are your thoughts, Enchanted? I think it kind of goes against their whole like, ethos of the game of it being you know more um, con- convenient to play than traditional MMOs, and this is like yeah, one so, of the so. Yeah, this is so one like, of the did, systems. Do you think they their statement has basis? Like, wouldn't you do that? Wouldn't you put the best die in your on all your characters instead of just the one who unlocked it? Yeah, I don't really know what the argument is for having you know them split across everything. Like, why not? 
I guess if you make a new character, then maybe that, they that's don't. That's it. Like, maybe they don't if want... it's like a brilliant, like glowing golden or something that looks just absolutely amazing on any arm you put it on, mm-hmm. and you lock it with your highest level character, wouldn't you put that on your lowest level character? Yeah. Like, would you want it to look more awesome? Right. Yeah, but but, if, but on if, the other hand, I I earned it once. Why do yeah. I have to go back and earn it like again? If, if I decide to buy die because I probably will for like hundreds of gold, you know, spending thousands of dollars or and, whatever, and also and I buy this die and it's like fuck you, just on one character. Sorry. Also, I, also, I mean, oh, yeah, I, I look cool, but who the fuck cares if I look cool or not? <laughs> you do. I do. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But no one else is going to probably care. No one's right. going to be like, oh, man, shit. He has the glowing golden and black dye. He looks but, like but a here's the thing. Here's the thing. He looks cool. Since oh, you care what two. you look like, since you care what you look like, it's easy for them to rationalize that cosmetics is an easy way to get people to spend money, whether Ooh. in-game or real-world. So is that yeah. your... And, 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 and it is one of their money sources. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that, that is something that, that does <laughs> seem kind of... I think it's full, it's full shady. Evil Arena Net trying to earn money. So <laughs> wait, Tarkin, do, do you think that's that was their um, that was their actual real reason rather than this one? Yeah. The, oh, okay. The, there's very limited... Like, not all dyes look good. Like even the best right. dyes don't look the the best across all characters and armors. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it seems like the first. Well, like like even in Guild Wars One, black dye does not work on all the armors. Yeah, it, it looks, looks good on really nice. some armors, but not every armor. It looks, looks nice, better really black dye. nice on the uh, oppressor scythe. That's what I can say. But yeah, so it's so well. That's a good good point. Like they could actually be saying, "Hey, there's this thing on the gem store called the random dye pack." Why don't we get people to buy that a whole bunch by making it unlock randomly per character? And I, I can see people, because it's not like you can purchase a specific die. It's not like you can go into the gem store and go, hey, I want the golden mystic die of awesomeness. And only that. You have to get a random die pack? Seriously? <laughs> which, but which is the thing. you spending it, hundreds of tell. dollars on these random die packs for this single die. I'm uh, locking on this one as character. As far as I can you tell, you, want you don't rubber. get double ups. Oh, you can't time. you can't get double. Like if you already have one unlocked, he won't give you because that's that's potentially just as bad because it means if you do spend X amount, you will get that die. Eventually, it's kind of yes. worse, don't you think? No, it's not worse, but it's just as bad. I think. Oh well, then I mean, like having more than like one of the same die is fine because then you can sell the other one if it's valuable. But you can't sell it. Oh, you can't sell dies. No, you unlock the die. Oh yeah, no, but you can oh, sell. Oh shit! Yeah, I thought it wait, drops wait. the item, then you have to. It, it drops the item that you double click to unlock. Yeah. Oh right. Yeah. That's, oh, that's true. Yeah. So it probably does that, which means you can probably trade on the trading. Like, I didn't. Has anyone checked? Can you actually buy dyes off the trading post? I didn't. I don't remember. I can't. I don't know. I don't. I all. All I bought was the chef cooking outfit for one gold, <laughs> which I want but, my refund. What? It's it's kind of lame because if okay, so my opinion on this is they kind of have a point. Like, um, if, cause sure, when I get to the top level knight's armor for warrior, I want that armor and I want it to look as best as it can. Cause at that point I've already spent like as, pretty much all my money on it. I want to, I want to make it look badass. So in the first Guild Wars, I got there, got the 15k armor and then spent the, what, whatever it was like 50k on go like black dye. I think I actually changed up and went back to silver after a while but anyway black die for my for that armor it was part of the um the inverted commas achievement to get the max armor to get the equivalent really cool die set for it right and it's kind of their point they're saying people it's part of the loot treadmill um mentality people when looking for the loot treadmill looking for the best armor looking for the armor for them they want that experience of having yes getting the the best armor but there's a secondary experience of also making it look as cool as possible like the the decking out your character kind of thing that's like that's a thing people want that's an experience people like having um and that could be cool to allow that for some dies in the game Right, so my actual perspective is like I I take all of that as a given, and I assume most of you would agree with me on that point. It is an achievement for a lot of people, um, 
it's something that people look for and it's part of getting the max armor. Like that, that's something right. that is part of that statement. Like that's but, the whole idea behind prestige armor in the original Guild Wars. It's exactly. the same as the 15k armor, but yeah. it's like 80 times more expensive. Exactly. And, and that's the kind of same thing if they aiming for the same kind of experience with the dice. And I can see where they're going with that. But 400 dice? Like, seriously? You're going to make a me lot unlock. Of dice. Yeah, that, like, yeah. yeah that, that aside, like, I, I love the fact that they And of course, this 400 dice thing does include the fact that um, there's mul- multiple shades of brown. So there's wood brown and there'd be leather brown, right? That'd be two different right. sides of brown. So, Even though they so look you- very barely different on the character, it's still two different distinct colors. And there's textures associated with the dyes. Like, some dyes make your armor look more metallic, and some dyes make it look more leathery. Like, the dyes have a texture. Um, it's going to be all leather. <laughs> so, so like the best option would be to have some dies unlockable and other exactly you know, unlocking ones. Yeah. High five, noob. That was what I was going to come to. What if? Yeah. Wouldn't it be better if about three hundred and eighty or three hundred and fifty of those dies were unlocked across all your characters, but there are some prestige dies that you had to do like specific quest lines and like objectives for? That would be cool. That would be a reason to a do those quests and a cool reward for doing those like event chains and stuff like that. And have it unlockable for the top. I feel like it should more be like 200, 200, like half, half. Sure. But it's, yeah. that's either way is better than 20 yeah, dies that come with your yeah. character and then 380 dies that you have to unlock per character, right? Like, I, I love the idea of there being prestige dies because, again, yeah, it could look awesome. Like, for example, in Diablo 3, when you see someone walk around with those collector's edition wings, it looks so badass. And I, and I wouldn't mind having that, but I wouldn't have pitched in for the collector's edition anyway um the same kind of thing with if there was like dyes that did like have like a glow to them or some really cool like distinguishing effect that could be awesome like Um, for those people who bought who got totally fucked over like idiots like me who bought the digital deluxe edition should get a special die because that's what i deserve for paying 20 dollars more than the regular (laughs) copy of the game (laughs) because i'm literally getting nothing here man come on i I told you not to get it well no no sorry i I didn't tell you by the time you're exactly get it but when you got it i made fun of you (laughs) that's true i i'm an idiot i pre-ordered the collector's edition wow wait so has has public opinion swapped swapped on this like most people were like yeah oh yeah i got the collector's edition that would do you guys i I don't i don't know i don't know if like uh, $150. But $150. The it's the no, but the thing about the difference is you get you get physical stuff. Like for yeah. the digital deluxe. You yeah, yeah I, do, I, do get items. A, I do get a pretty badass like Ritlock statue, right. which is going to go right next to... $20 for nothing. It's going to go right ride. next to my Geralt of Rivia bust that I got with Witcher 2. And <laughs> and your and, and your other anime figurines. And, and all my anime figurines. I have the entire cast of... of Puella Magi Magica Magica. Okay, you know what? Let's continue on. Enchanted, I, I what are your thoughts on I this have dice? All their do, do you think it would be better uh, if there was like unlockable, lockable prestige dies, but um, the rest of the dice to be split up to your character? What, what, what percentage do you want to see? Like, what are your thoughts on this? Just before I go into, I think it wouldn't be so much of a problem if they didn't offer a previous option before, like giving people more and then. Offering them less after is going to make you know you're just guaranteed to have a bad reaction. So, oh yeah, um, like they they gave it to us and they took it away. It so, wasn't a case of them. Um, so it's kind yeah, of a bad right. faux pas on their point, point part to you know do that in the first place. But um, yeah, I think what you suggested with the prestige stuff sounds better. Maybe like probably like a top twenty five because I don't actually think that like half the dies actually good <laughs> any good <laughs> like i i am not gonna quest for that mystical purple i'm sorry i, I know purple is a pretty <laughs> sweet rad color and if i ever make a female character which i never do i'll probably pop it on her but just doesn't work on male warrior <laughs> yeah i'm sorry it sure it does you can make a fabulous well maybe if it's a black dude a with a sweet man. afro and and i gave him purple armor that would be pretty awesome but and, and go back to afro spiking from the first Guild wars which is a <laughs> joke only five people in the world will get but um yeah, no, again, I, I, the current system, I think, is a bit too much. I don't want to... I like being able to swap dies in my character. I, I like being able to get into... I like to be able to a consistent character across all my... I'm sorry, color across all my characters. That's, that's another big thing. Like, I realized that maybe for a max level dude, I want him to have really cool prestige colors on him. Still, it's, still better my, than, it's still better than, like, what you get elsewhere, though, when you think about it. Oh yeah, like you can. Yeah, exactly. So 
it's like, not too, it's, not it's too better bad. than buying. It's better than Diablo three, where you have to buy an individual die and then use it on a piece of armor, and then it's over. Yeah, you have to buy another one for each new piece of armor. Yeah, you're right. Um, but still, I, I, I'm just not too just, impressed. Yeah. So, what's the just what's the ending opinions of everyone? I'll go around the table on this one. Rawson, what's your final statements on this topic? I just you should make it more convenient for me, not less. Right, and so you'd, you'd like it if they return to their previous way, right? Yeah, that's obvious. That's the more convenient. Yeah, so option. everything locked on the cross. Would you would you concede that maybe having a prestige ones is better, or do you just want it to be unlocked across everything? I don't know about the prestige stuff. That sounds like a bunch of work. <laughs> I'm, I'm cool. not in the mood for work. Noob, what, what are your final thoughts on this topic? I've actually gone back on my opinion, and I think everything should be unlocked. I don't want it. I don't want to do prestige ones, especially prestige ones where I have to spend so much money on fucking dies. Jesus Christ! I was thinking more along the lines of like hard event chains, but okay. T- Tarkin, what are your final thoughts on this topic? Uh, oh, wait, event I'm, chains. I'm not one. too yeah, fast. As long as I don't have to buy it. Yeah, you don't have to buy it. You have to earn it. That'd be cool, yep. right? Yeah, um, Tarkin. Yeah. I'm not too fast. I'll stick with the default unless I find something interesting. So I don't really mind. Yeah, yeah so I'm, I'm actually the least affected by this because all my dudes are going to be gray and darker gray because I like full realism and you get all the browns and grays, like the metal grays for your chain mail out By of the default. box with the warrior. Yeah. You're yeah. going to feel really silly then uh, <laughs> running around in your full realism colors while everyone else is dressed up like a fucking clown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm going to feel really dumb. <laughs> I'm going to feel Enchanted, so out of place. What are your final thoughts? Uh, yeah, I'd rather the old system, but I guess this one isn't right. so bad when you compare it to other stuff. But it's still, yeah, when you still a really stuff, weird yeah. decision to make and announce. So. Well, yeah, it was it was more of a because um, we actually noticed it um, during the last beta. Duran made a new character with anyone to go back to some of the die. Like again, he prefers to, like me to have the same colors across all the characters. So if someone sees you in your guild, for example, they know who they're dealing with. But um. Yeah, too, he looked across his characters and he, and he realized that he couldn't re-dye his new character in the same colors as his old one because some of that was unlocked. And we were we thought it was a bug because we thought we remembered that it should be account unlocked. But yeah, either way, it's, it's still it's always better than having purchasable dyes. I agree. Um, so I think that's everyone, right? Did I miss anyone? Uh, I guess we can move to the next topic. Um, Nubarami, if you want to read out for us? Hmm, the next topic. Let's Monday. do this. On Monday, earlier this week, a private video was uploaded to the official Guild Wars 2 YouTube page, which was titled, Ratasum, Capital of the Asura in Guild Wars 2. Could this suggest an appearance of the Asura in next month's beta weekend? Uh, Tarkin, I think you had something to say about this. Before anyone else jumps on it, I think Tarkin has some dissenting opinions. Go. Okay. The, the video that was uploaded is the UK version. The US version was uploaded two months ago. Okay, right. So you're saying that um, essentially this is them updating an old video. No, no. It looks like it's for like advertising or something. Because it, it, right. But even more importantly, the official Arena Net channel uploaded it eight months ago. So you're saying a video exact of the same, same video, the exact same name? Yeah. Oh, With right, like okay. just a different intro. Right. All right, so it's it's very possible this entire thing was because um, the first person or one of the first people to report on it was actually um, Bogarder, who's a really cool guy. Um, he was on he's on Guildcast. I love him. I love his work. Um, and he, he what happened to him is he received an email from the ArenaNet uh, Guild so YouTube channel, which told him about the update, and he clicked through to it. And um, it, it just came to up to as a private video, so he assumed that maybe it was like a mistake, and they're, really up, re, they're uploading the video for a reveal later, close to the next beta. But uh, again, yeah, Tarkin saying that um, this same video was actually uh, previously uploaded months and months ago, and this was just like them. It reminds me of Stamina you know, Power, a second upload. I don't know those lines. It's right? not. They release US and UK versions. Like, you know right. the MMO Manifesto? The US version was uploaded 11 months ago. The UK version okay. was uploaded three months ago. <laughs> All right. And yeah, clearly they're not announcing the game again, pretty yeah. much. So, um, wait, Enchanted, have you heard about this? Uh, no, this is the first time I've heard of it. It's, okay, yeah. cool. I just thought you had something to say that would be better. Anyway, um, so the sad part is a lot of people jumped onto this saying, hey, that's freaking awesome. Um, 
because they've really well they they're releasing the Asura next beta weekend because again like it, they had a blog post this week talking about the design philosophy which I thought was a snore fest but one of the um images on that blog post was a platforming image and hey platforming it was too awesome I guess question mark um some people like it some people don't I should say that uh of an Asura jumping Frying, a pretty awesome video. It was like really zoomed out. It was like all these platforms and a sewer, like a tiny little sewer was jumping from one platform to another and behind it was this waterfall, right? And it's a sewer. So everyone's like, hey, there's this video that went up um, about the sewer and there's a sewer in this uh, image for the blog post. Maybe they're giving us hints for the next beta weekend event. But it, apparently it's going to be, they're looking a bit uh, too deeply at it. Is that, that what you say? What, what are your thoughts, Rawson? What? Yeah, were you paying attention? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was. Um, <laughs> it, it sounds more like it was just they just they forgot to upload it to the UK channel, so <laughs> but they if did. You, if you hadn't heard the reality behind the situation, what would your thoughts have been? <laughs> I just I'm just interested to know. Fuck you, Asura. Or no, you wouldn't. You wouldn't say. I, that, I, yeah. I probably wouldn't have been checking the UK channel for Guild Wars Two ever, so I can't really you tell go. you. <laughs> Yeah, and no- Noob, your thoughts? Are you let like, down by the fact that it's probably um, not the Asura announcement? Yeah, because I thought it was like going to be, oh, Asura's coming, uh, watch out, kids, or something like that. I know, right? <laughs> and uh, that's a disappointment. Yeah, Fuck you no, again, ArenaNet. <laughs> Every you decision you've made in the past month has been terrible, I hate you. Right. <laughs> first, first it was tr- skills and traits, and now it's this, right? Well, well, know, hey, right? Noob, you can join me in playing The Secret World the next the newest wow killer uh, of the week shit. i'm gonna start downloading right now Just, it's free on, beta this weekend oh boy it's brought to you by funcom who's <laughs> offering us new brand experiences with the secret world can I can I get a take of that uh, Funcom statement again? Can you just say Funcom for me again that way? Funcom. All right, how are we gonna split this check? I do it deeper. Do it deeper. Funcom. Listen. No, that sounds like Funcom. anyway. Funcom. There we go. All right. Funcom. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I I, I I was personally really disappointed when Tarkin fun told me. Comes. I put this um story on because I was like, hell yeah, Sura. And then Tarkin's like, uh, dude, nah. I'm like, oh, That's my essential response. Destroyer time. of dreams and hope. Destroyer of dreams, yeah. Tarkin. Um, that's my first response. Dude, it was like a two-second was... session on YouTube. Yeah, I hate you. Hey. Hope is the first step on the road to disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just because I don't research any of the stories I put in this podcast doesn't mean you have to. <laughs> Two seconds was research? What? Uh, no, I, I really... Because it's, it's one of those things where my hopes for it may have overtook um, my journalistic integrity, of which I have none because I'm not a journalist, I'm an engineer. Um, but yeah, no, Your it's... Your engineering integrity... I, I I wanted. Yeah, we we do totally to have to have integrity, dude. I don't know how it is in your Australia land, but <laughs> here in America, no, I, you have that, to take. No, that plane will fly. Tests. That plane will fly. Whatever. Yeah, we, yeah. We there's a crack. No, it's just a crack. I just put some glue in there. Whatever. <laughs> um, but this is but a yeah. circuit board. No, I just put glue on it. Yeah, whatever. It's glue. It'll fix it. So oh, there's it. a stupid post <laughs> on Jack Palm, tape, right? Was I, I think it was like, what if I co- coat something in glue? Would it be unbreakable? Question mark. What? I hate what? people. Stop, um, stop so, it. So, all right, New Rama, take us to the next uh, piece of news. Do, 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 do. Um, how did that BBC intro go? Whatever, whatever. That's irrelevant. Just, just Guild Wars <laughs> Two peripherals have been announced from Steel Series. Uh, articles include well, a headset. A mouse, no, 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 no! God, no. You're stop! Terrible! At Do it German. in the voice. <laughs> I was, I don't know where uh, I went with that. Uh, I don't know where I went all with right, that. so Sorry. Guild Wars Two peripherals have been announced from Steel Series. We're essentially looking at um a mouse, uh, a headset, and three mouse pads. I think it was. Oh, like those sexy breast mouse pads. Yeah. No, God, this is no. not Japan. <laughs> this is not Japan. You can, you can buy one when you pre-order the latest great hentai game. Do you like horny bunnies? Four. Oh, c- come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, something like that. So uh, the actual equipment themselves—they look like 
So this is my problem, right? Um, it's from Steel Series, who are fine. They, they put out good stuff, but the actual images Their keyboards are really good. They they are they are right they are right. Um, if you just Google uh, Steel Series GW2 lineup, um, you can see the actual images of the stuff. But in my opinion, like this headset and the the mice and like pretty much all of these look a bit cheap like is anyone else looking at the same jpeg i, I can link it to you it's in the show notes um tarkin or you, you're the one who showed me the jpeg what, what are your thoughts would you buy any of these the mouse pads look decent enough but the headset no the mouse i'm not <laughs> sure it, it might uh, be fine but yeah i don't know you think, you think they use an mmo mouse with like you know bulk buttons i've never used one before yeah but- Oh god, those things it's look the so still series horrible. sensei recolored. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a sensei. I like the light on the how wheel. Mu- how much does the sensei cost? Is the sensei good? It's is supposed it good to be a good and... mouse, but I don't know. <laughs> if right. I bought... this is like a generic I am in a Logitech G9 and I'm you pretty much have to pry these from my dead fingers unless you come up with something really good. Oh um, do you have the G nine X? Yes. <laughs> yeah, of solidarity of fist bump. damn straight fist bump um yeah it's, it's a great mouse uh it doesn't have too oh, many God, buttons yeah. on it it's just got the d forward and back buttons but that's pretty much yeah. all you need uh well it, it's also got that dpi switch yeah mm-hmm. that's that sweet dpi oh God, yeah. <laughs> so i, I don't see myself switching because um, the idea was um for a lot of the bigger mmos that came out recently I think it was Razer. Razer actually puts out, like, does guess a lot of these deals and puts out the um, official in the. Uh, Steel Series actually got the uh, has gotten uh, Diablo three and World of Warcraft mouse. Really? I yeah, thought... they okay. Steel Series did that. Uh, Razer does other such wonderful ones. Let me check out their licensed <laughs> gaming product, such as they do great games like Battlefield three, Dragon Age two, that's a pretty good League game. of Legends. No Mass comment. Effect 3, no Starcraft 2, buys a gaming mouse for Star a Wars or not, The like Old Republic. That's the only real MMO one I, I can remember. The Tron Transformers one. 3 oh, and Tron. Tron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, Still Series cool. are the but, ones that actually get all the... Yeah, would you, but... Would you like guys the, well, like to buy a $30 Tron gaming mouse mat? Dude, it leaves a light trail behind when you... Move it around. Serious? It's a mouse mat, so no, no it probably doesn't not. Even... You need like a special mat and mouse, and it leaves a light trail. It's insane. Also, it's out of stock. That's kind of cool. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't Sorry. think it actually does that, Cynic. Damn it! Oh, it could. Sure it it was like an LED. It's not powered by anything. Maybe it's just the. What mouse. if it's chemicals? What if it's chemicals? It's razor magic. It makes it's magic. It, it has go. light and sound effects at start up and shut down. <gasps> that sounds awesome. No, it doesn't. So, um, so it's powered? <laughs> I gotta uh, get a battery for my fucking, ma- fucking mouse pad? What the hell? Wait, so Garbage. The, the reason I, I brought up Razer was... How shit is your mouse they... pad that it doesn't need a battery? What are you, Dark Ages? No electricity in your house? Shit. <laughs> Aside from the fact that they um, pretty much only did the Old Republic one, uh, the Razer is famous, is famous for their mo mice. Razer and I think... Uh, a couple of the comp- companies, like the guys who do rats, the rat mice, uh, are pretty are pretty like well established gaming mice. Uh, for example, the Razer Naga is probably the most famous one for WoW. That's the one with twelve, like a ridiculously large amount of yep, buttons 12. on the side of it. The, yeah. Uh, wh- why? Why would you ever play a video game that needs that many buttons right by your thumb? <laughs> Isn't <laughs> but, there like a thirty-six button mouse? I don't know. Who puts that out? Stupid but the, the good thing I, is, like, that was 12, right? And I think that's too many. And then if you look at their MOBA mouse, it has, I think it was six or whatever in a hexagon shape, which I think would be pretty usable. The reason I'm saying this is I wouldn't mind there being a um, special, like, I, I'm happy with dual mousing. Um, I'm, 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 I'd be fine with there being a special mouse for Guild Wars 2, which just had maybe five buttons on it for the second half of your skill bar, for example. Hang on a second. I'm on. Cool. Hang on. I'm on Razer's website right now. The <laughs> Razer Naga Epic is called the Elite MMO Gaming Mouse. Damn the straight. Razer <laughs> The Razer Naga Molten is called the Expert MMO Gaming Mouse. Uh huh. What the fuck is the difference between the Expert and the Elite? <laughs> the Epic and why wireless. does it justify an extra fifty dollars? It's wireless. Oh god. So the the wire. So it's worse. The ep- the Epic yeah. is worse. If it's no no. Oh, wow. You can plug yes. it in to make it wired, but it's a uh... okay. Nominally wireless. Uh, wireless option. 
Great. Before we get more lights. But, okay, so... All right, let's run through the rest of this because I'm pretty sure none of us are pretty excited. Right. Or the Logitech excited G600 all for, uh, has 20 mice buttons, mouse buttons. Uh, oh yeah, I mean, that's was, the new one. Are, are excited for the um, mouse? Uh, the headset looks absolutely freaking terrible. This is like one of those generic shitty headsets. Are, are you guys have you guys caught up in looking at this picture now? Um, yeah. It's one of those on ear. It, it's like white and red. The gill was two colors, but it just doesn't. I just don't want a white and red headset, and just look at dirty and. And, it, it, and again, like I've spent what about a thousand dollars on my headphones and and um, digital amplifier. I I don't want to. I'm not interested in this at all. It, it, would it, any of you are any of you looking for a headset upgrade? Uh, just no. just get some Samson SR eight fifties. There, that, that's what I got, and they're like fifty bucks, in and they're great. It works pretty well. Or you can go for the Denon D five thousand. Actually, does, with, does uh, this? I don't think it this <laughs> even has microphone. It might have no, an inline mic. Like, doesn't it? Sure. Is it just headphones? It's oh, just it headphones. might be inline, yeah. That'd be retarded. Because it's, it's called a headset, I think. It might be inline. Anyway, again, so it's that, a general flop on the headset cool. as well. I so the mouse pads. pads. Now, these are white mouse pads. Um, What's wrong white with that? With their... With oh, the yeah, it does two, have an inline microphone. Okay. With Guild Wars 2 um, imaging on it. So you have the big two on one of them. You have a warrior on the next one. Then you have air, I think. It's, so Logan Thackeray. It's Logan Thackeray and air. air and the standard Guild Wars 2. Logo, Logo yeah. yeah. Um, would you guys be interested in these? Like They, they look yeah. good, they but look they're cool. white. Like They're white mouse pads. Like, even if they're um, plastic. I'm not top, a dirty shit-throwing ape, so I don't mess up my mouse pads like you, fa- you uh, dirty <laughs> apes do. Dirty you apes, yeah. Do. Okay. Great. Um, Enchanted, would you be interested in a sweet Guild Wars 2 <laughs> mouse pad? I don't have a mouse pad at the moment, so I'm looking for one, so maybe. I don't know. Hey, I think, I think they look customer. I think they look nice. <laughs> but, um, this mouse pad is from 1995, the one I'm using right now. But what are your opinions on white mouse pads? Like, I, I still think it'll get ridiculous and dirty and disgusting after a while, even if it's plastic topped. Maybe you should be a cleaner person, yeah. Cynic. Maybe. Maybe. That's your fault, sure. Worsen, are you in, are you, are so you in the, um, the market for a sweet white Guild Wars 2 mouse pad? Um, no. <laughs> Turkey? No. <laughs> no. I would, Turkey, round us out. I would not get one. I, I, got, <laughs> I got a mouse pad. It has a dragon on it from a video game, I guess. I like the solidness right. of his um, but the statement. The thing is, I, I just I, prefer I, I um, not get one. monochromatic <laughs> mice pads. Well, it's, it's, it's only got two colors. <laughs> They're no, 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 three. It's 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 red, it's white, and black. Pads. And it's mostly white. And orange. And a bit of orange in there. And yeah, well, Anyway. Well, that counts as red. Maybe that a mouse red. pad with boobs. All right, so we can move on. I guess the general consensus is no one's particularly excited about these Steel Series Guild Wars 2 peripherals. Maybe you are. Maybe you want to check them out. Um, again, you can Google search for Steel Series Guild Wars 2 lineup or just check out Steel Series. I assume they have it on the website. Um, New Barami, you want to take us to the final news for today? We've actually spent way too much on news, but the news has been a lot and pretty Confirmed good, so. in the Reddit, ask me anything. An item preview is in the works, so one can preview an item on their character before making a purchase. Yeah. So, again, this is from the AMA. We're just catching up. You probably already heard about this, but um, it happened a couple of weeks ago, I think two weeks ago or three weeks ago now, and they confirmed an item previewer. So, essentially, if you go up to a merchant, you buy a person some expensive new armor, you can actually have a look at what it... Like, if you click the armor, it'll come up, I assume, because I haven't finished it yet, and I haven't put it in the game yet, but it'll come up and it'll show you what it looks like on your character. What I think it's an excellent thing. I think this is in other games. Rawson, you're the resident MMO guy. Has this been in many other games? What do you think of it? For for the item preview, yeah, yeah, it's it's a standard thing, um, right? <laughs> it's, it's 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 another it's another one of those features where you just kind of go, well, yeah, that should be in every one of these. Nice, and then and so your general consensus is uh, finally exclamation mark or uh, ex- like, did, did you miss it? More like finally, dot, period, dot, dot. or or <laughs> dot dot dot. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but it, did you miss it? Just, did you miss the lack of it? I, I actually didn't. not not really. I didn't really care enough. But then again, I mean, I've been beta, so I don't really care how my character looks. Right. 
and it's so like, yeah, I guess, I guess if you're spending like 15k or 20k on your because like, like half of this is covered by just having your wiki. For example, I, I used to just look up armors in the wiki before making the purchasing decision. Um, to see how they look in a warrior, for example, in Guild Wars One. Uh, but it's good to have. Like I guess, I guess it's cool. Most of the time, until I'm like level 80, I won't give a shit what I look like. So, um, enchanted. What are you? What are your thoughts here? I think this is cool, but where the hell is the character select button? Have any of you noticed oh, that? Oh, man. Yeah. No, I, mean, I think everyone's noticed that. Like, yeah, that um, same, same as what Rawson said, but... <laughs> where the hell is the character <laughs> select button? Where's character select? Yeah, stop working on this. Bring me a freaking character select button. Well, what totally are you talking about? Agree. It's a logout button, and then you, yeah, but then you sign you, in. Then you have to log in again. Single character. That's so bullshit. That's so bullshit. And what if the login server goes down? Like in Google's which, which one, does you could... any every one of oh, these. Oh yeah, games. I've had that problem before. Let's switch characters. I want to see the oh 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 oh. oh. <laughs> um, Tarkin, thoughts? I think this is actually great news. I, I think this is because I, I don't yeah. play too many MMOs. I was surprised that this was a thing. When I heard about it, I was really excited. I was like, hey, cool, that's a good idea. Cool, um, but Tarkin Guild Wars too. <laughs> oh my god, uh, Tarkin, what are your yeah. thoughts? Yeah, it's a it's a very good feature. That, um, but in I think they were just leaving it for later, because in Guild Wars 1, it, right. everything was pretty cheap, so it wasn't a, as big a deal. Yeah. And they're just porting yeah, yeah. things over, so they're still working on it or something. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. It was announced before the last beta, and it'll probably be in before the next beta. They said they were, it was on the table, and they're working on it at the moment. Um Along with a couple other things, and with that, we will move on to our discussion of the week. Wait, no, is, what about me? Ter- okay, sure, sure new. What, what are your... I, th- I think they should change, do it, like, in real life, where you can actually try it out, like, give it into, into your inventory. And like I do in real life, you should be able to walk out of the store, but if you get caught and die, your account is locked for, like, a week. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. So you want simulated theft in Guild Wars 2? Yeah. Is that, is that what you're saying? I mean... But what, you like know a... what else had simulated theft? Ultima Online. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it all back around. <laughs> Bring it full circle back to 1997. <laughs> Woo! You know what we should Hooray. do? Only we'll... allow thieves to do it. Because they're the only ones that can steal. <laughs> nice. There's a oh, thievery man. skill in oh, Ultima I'm not, Online. I'm not a thief and I walk out plenty of times with clothes on from clothing stores. And so a I'm going to move on to our. Fir- that was that was the first good silence reaction. I, I, I I've been I've been pausing after pretty much most of noob statements, hoping for one of those, but it happened. I'm happy. It's good. Um, so the plan was this week to get a good deal of discussion about world versus world. Like that was what we said last week, and that's what I said at the start of this episode. What, but that's all we talked about last week. We didn't talk about. World vs. World at all last week. Well, we were talking about play experiences, and that's that was literally World vs. World for everyone. That was me. No, so and we literally said everyone was like, "Hey, because all we did was World vs. World, we'll talk about it next week because we should at least get some PVE impressions." <sighs> but we're sitting here, and, and then we did it for at, like three hours, and we're an hour and fifteen minutes already. Um, ish. I'm not sure what I actually come down to when I did get all the. Uh, okay, guys. Down. Fifteen minutes. Let's talk about World vs. World. I think World vs. World was very fun. I enjoyed it greatly when I was playing with you guys. But then when I switched over to my main server and things switched around, then I was pitted up against a server that was way way bigger than any of the other two servers. So then we died, and it wasn't a whole lot of fun. I, I oh here, oh my us. turn, my turn. I didn't play World vs. World. <laughs> Okay, yeah, this, this, uh, okay this, this is great. Um, I did World vs. World with the guild. It was amazing. We kicked ass. We rolled around with five to eight people, and we generally dominated the map. You're held just the server. saying it what was I just said. <laughs> but I didn't have the experience of being owned, so um, there is a difference. Uh, but the, the main thing here is I think we don't have enough time to actually go into a proper World v. World discussion because I actually want to talk <sighs> tactics and a couple of other things. I, want it, I don't just want to do impressions. <sighs> world vs. World for impressions. tactics. What are you? Zerg, yeah, Zerg, I think we'll actually do a tactic, like an actual Guild Wars, uh, Guild tips Wars and tricks two class. Tactics. It's going well, to be is. A it's, it's pretty strategy. amazing that that's, that's uh, a third me Guild Wars and Tarkin and at least one of the other guys I know in real life. Um, I'm not sure what his actual in-game name was. I think it was uh, no, I can't, I can't talk. But um, he he, we we can sit around and talk tactics with World vs. World for a while. So I think we'll actually blow it out into its own show. Especially since we did so much on news this week. I'm really sorry for those guys who actually were interested in hearing us talk about it. And Duran's not here. And he was there with us during the event. And Darkeen is here as well. 
I, I think we'll blow it out. But what we'll do this episode instead, um, since we have done so much news, I mean, we only really have about 10, about 10 to 15 minutes left in the episode. Um, what I'll get is Tarkin and um, Enchanted Echoes. I, I'm just reading through the show notes to make sure we haven't missed anything. Um, Tarkin and Enchanted Echoes uh, experiences from the last beta because they weren't with us last week's podcast. I'll get you in, your impressions and what you did. I'll start with Enchanted because I already know what I'm talking about with uh, Tarkin. So Enchanted... What did you actually experience in the beta? Uh, this is, wait, World v. World specifically? The, or? Oh, no, no, just in general. We'll, we'll do World versus World probably next week. Well, the first thing I did, uh, I tried that jumping puzzle inside the World v. World the, area. The, the mini dungeon? Um, the, we talked essentially about that, but just like a quick impression. What are, you, what are your thoughts of it? It's pretty cool. surprisingly hard-ish. I don't know. I think yeah. I suck at MMO platforming. Or Wait, was it janky. hard because you were bad? or like, And it was actually difficult or something like that? It's, or no, it's hard because it was broken? It is the yeah, more, it's, like, it feels Maystack like on the forums didn't have feel, too many issues with it. Yeah. I think it's not that bad if you approach it by yourself and you have a lot of time. Like, but you have any pressure from like guys who you're currently rolling with that you're somewhat competing against or even worse, people from the opposing team, I think it's like much more difficult. But oh, Enchanted, what was your funny. experience? Yeah, it just feels kind of hacky. So. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't. Would you agree with what we said last week? Where it's like it feels like you're kind of breaking the game by jumping on things that weren't really designed to be jumped on. <laughs> yeah, but then they they actually want you to jump there, so it's weird. Yeah, like, exactly. That's the path to go. <laughs> it's to, just weird. It feels like you're not supposed to go there. I know it's it's odd. I'm not I'm not sure if many MMOs do jumping puzzles. I just it, this is not Guild Wars Two is not a platformer, even though it has jumping puzzles in it and jumping in it. It just doesn't feel quite there, in my opinion. Would you recommend other people to do it? Yeah, it's it's, it's different. It's cool to try out. There's <laughs> it's a reward cool at the end, I, I think. I don't know. Did you get to the end? No, I could see it. But no. Yeah. Oh, it wasn't good. Uh, did you just run out of time, or did you just get you just got sick of it? I had to leave, so yeah, ran out of time. Okay, cool. And what else did you do? I played a surprising amount of structured PvP, which I think is actually Ooh. pretty cool. Okay, I'm, I'm, let's let's sit sit back. Everyone, take a step back. Let's 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 chat about structured PvP. I, I'm sorry. I like it better than World vs. World. You like really? I played World vs. World. Yeah. Wait, I you like, haven't yeah. played any World vs. World? Well, I, I I walked around and then I blue screened. That was about. You know, oh, so your opinion's invalid, screen. is what you're saying. That's a fun <laughs> but I, I, I like, I kind of like structured PvP. Okay, well, if, if, was the time it you played more with me and the other guys the only time you played structured? Uh, no. Okay, how many times did you play? Because, all right, to run you through our experience, um, we ran in with a couple of guildies. I won't talk about my complaints. I did that last week. But um, we walked in, and it was everyone pretty much except for one dude on Mumble. And the first thing I said as soon as we walked in was, okay, um, New Rami, you stick with this guy, and I'll stick with this guy. And no, you started. said stick with me. Oh, no, that was the second match. That was the second match. Oh. All right. So the first match, exactly, this this is what I'm getting to. So the first match, we get out of the gates, New Rami runs in his own fucking direction, <laughs> just ignores everything anyone has said, and just does whatever the fuck he wants for the entire, for the entire round. Um, we lose horribly. Um, I, I wasn't not his fault. It's not you entirely your fault. I remember looking at that scoreboard yeah, it was not and you were bottom wow. with zero. You were yeah, bottom I, with zero. That one I, I bottomed was middle. I, did, I, I, think, middle. I don't think I bottomed out ever again, but that one I bottomed out. I was um, in the middle. I was in the middle of the pack, so fuck you. I yeah, but play. the main thing was, like, you usually expect a PvP environment to be everyone, like, constant chatter and, like, everyone coordinating until, like, giving you constant updates of where they are. <laughs> I'm used to random or now. Fuck that. And he just, wa- he just, sil- just deadpan silence that's, on his end. <laughs> that's how red... That's you just how see random him running around works. the map. <laughs> that's how a random arena works, Cynix. That's... You got it. You got it. Actually, that's not how random. Arena. The most success I had with random arenas is when you go in and as soon as like, the twenty seconds before the match starts, you, someone goes, "Who's calling?" Question mark. Someone answers, "I wrong, will." Wrong. And then someone the best, calls. The best way a random arena goes is if you have a monk on your team. That's how you win <sighs> yeah, random. Arena. You win every time. No, that's no, that's wrong because we without monks, if a, with a good caller and some good team coordination, even though we're yeah, completely okay. randoms and don't. That have must have been a nice before, dream. Cynic. Beat down monks. No, it happened. I've gotten like twenty concept, fifteen concept from that, I don't that know. kind of experience. I, I doubt it. <laughs> you're, I a liar, doubt it. Sinek, you're a liar, Sinek. You're a liar. You're lying. You're lying on this podcast. He's <laughs> not lying. Oh, I, I think there's, I think there's a distinct reason. What it depends? I don't know. I don't know what this. Remember, this is random arenas. Are talking about? This is random arenas. Oh yeah, we're talking about guilds. Okay, we're talking about guilds. One. Let's let's put a break. <sighs> breaks in that conversation. Um, but Enchanted Echo. 
Aside from, I assume you didn't play with noobs, so you didn't play with someone who's completely shit. P.S. Game. Just, just <laughs> have have every character be a warrior monk, and you'll win. So, um, what, what were your experiences with structured PvP in Chatted? Were you were you on Yak Spend or were you in a different server? Uh, I think I'm still on the Presso to Zandal Rock. So I was playing with some okay, Raynet cool. people, which was weird because they're oh, cool. certainly good. But. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I basically rolled a warrior and just went, you know, full on, you know, critical. Wait, and... wait, wait, back up, back up. Oh, hell yeah, critical. Y- warrior. You were playing on a press server? It's where the so press Amber server Rock. was. You're playing Amber Rock. People so, are still so there. So you were, you were playing with gaming journalists and they and you said they were good at video games? No, he's playing with Anet. He was playing with the Arena Net. Oh, oh, okay. Which is kind of crazy. No, gen- gen- I never got the chance. Gen- hey, can you, can you refer me to the Arena Net developer that um, d- decided to tier the traits? I would like a, a, a nice <laughs> chat with him. It's probably a Zaya Cartwright. That guy. He's, yeah, probably Cartwright. It, it, it was the same Zaya. guy that like nerfed every Good Wars one skill. So yeah, I, is he's a like bit him. of um. So I, I I think he has good ideas. I don't think he always executes on those good ideas. Um, and in this case, he just completely. I don't like the way he did skills. I don't mind traits, but I don't like the way he did skills. Anyway, so you, you generally just jumped in, had a great time. Did did you find were you coordinated? Like, do you see that much of like team yeah. chat, or did it feel more like a random arenas? Yeah, so was, there was, there was felt, a lot of team chat. It felt like yeah, because we don't we weren't doing we were in a tournament, so we're playing against some oh okay people. But I really like the um, the unlock system, even though it's random. Like you, you basically get points, and then you get enough that you can buy a chest. And you get, you can get. You know, oh, the what is, okay, right. No, you are saying things I'm not familiar with. Because we we started the to- a tournament. We got dominated the first round. Then we tried to, uh, some other stuff. So, can you run me through the Guild Wars Two structured PvP tournament experience from okay, scratch? So it's just it's not like first game. You basically play in between the two maps, and you keep playing until you get to the final. And if you get to the final, you get a huge bonus with a uh, rank and glory. Glory is basically. Like a so you're starting off with a with, with a pre. And, uh, Right. Yeah. So, you, but you so start, to, to slow it down, so you started off with a group of players, um, and were you teamed up out of the box? Bo- out of the box, so you had yeah. a team with you. If yeah, if you choose was to that, do that, that included Renet devs, or was that not? Yeah, was that, that was the Renet. Else? Holy they, crap! Okay. Anyway, so aside from your home. weirdly awesome experience in structured PvP with Arena devs and all that shit, um, so you jump in the structured PvP, and I think it's multiple rounds of elimination, right? Yeah. Um, so how, do you remember how many rounds it was? Or because it's it's eight person ladder or something like that. So you st- eight team ladder. So you start with um, you versus one team, and it's moving at the time only two maps were unlocked. So you'd be as you said moving between the two maps. But how many rounds do you think? It's like about three or four before you got to the finals. Yeah. So if you lose your round, like there's no. So I think. Oh, you just completely out, or do you go to like a losers bracket? Well, yeah. You, I think. I, oh, I didn't lose, so I don't. I don't actually know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was with the arena net deck, so I don't know. <laughs> Bastard! But, um, yeah, we, this we, this this episode should be Enchanted Echoes the Bastard. Like that should be what I just call <laughs> this episode. I hate you. Um, anyway, but, you okay, the, so you with got to, so the you final, got to the finals and won a load of points, and then you go to the chest, and this is only tier one stuff. And I'm, I think it's really cool that even the lowest gear can look. Wait, what, what do you mean by look, tier one? Like what what is that about? So there's, there's there's like a big tower, and it's got a chest on each side. You talk to the dude, and you can buy a chest. You double click it and you get random. Wait, so this is after you finish the tournament? Yeah. This is in the lobby. You, get, you to teleport it to a tower? It's part of that lobby. You know where the training dummies are and the, the dudes there? Yeah. It's like in the mists. Yeah. yeah. The, the there's a ta- I didn't see a tower, but I might, yeah. I might have just missed it. There's, there's a tower there. Okay. Yeah. And, 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 you, and, you, and you, you teleport to within this tower and there's like an NPC there that you talk to? Yeah. And, and what's the tower inside like? Is it, is it, because I, I, I have no, no, no idea. This, this I is, actually kind of want a mental picture. You would have seen it. It's just like a crappy, it's like all pulled away and you know, it's like a oh, okay, right. debris and I, crap. But anyway. <laughs> and so there's an NPC standing there. You talk to him and he gives you... Yeah, you can buy either uh, bronze, silver or gold chests. And you know, gold, you got a higher cost more and, it's, and you got a better chance of uh, getting a better piece of gear. Um, so I bought a few of those and the stuff I got actually looked cool, even though it's like the intro stuff which isn't the case you know with most games like usually the intro stuff was so what shit. kind of items were they were, were they because you get most pvp items from the pvp vendor weren't they or yeah do, what, so what this is a skin basically just believe. yeah these are basically skins so you can you have your armor skins and your 
weapons. Nothing, nothing oh. statistical. It's all cosmetic. So. All right. So when because when you drop into PvP in Guild Wars Two, you're kind of given a set of armor and it looks a certain way. So you're saying that when you if you win a tournament, you actually have a chance to unlock new ways to look in, in structured PvP. Yeah. Oh, cool. That's, that's actually, I was wondering how you did that because I was like, okay, this is Glad's armor, which looks okay, I guess, question mark. Um, so, I thought so it was a case them, of... So many of them look like you're wearing yeah. a dress and it looks horrible, even if you're a dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, wait, so did you, were they, because I can't really ask you to describe them because that would be difficult on radio, but um, but would you say the new armors that you got through unlocking it via tournament play were awesome or like they're slightly like, cooler looking than the Glad's? Also... You can unlock that through the normal pickup group. Like you don't have to do a tournament to do this. this is oh, just can you? Glory oh, points. It's just a yeah. um, glory points. Right, gotcha. Yeah. I think yeah. I only have 600 or so, something like that. Yeah, so when you get um, 1,000, you can buy your first chest. But, oh, cool. Yeah. And how, how, much do you, how many, do you remember how much glory you got from winning a tournament? 2,000, so you could buy two chests with that. Oh, wow. Okay, so I've, I've, I've done about three to four hours of structured PvP in total, and I've only got 600 points. So if I win a tournament, which is about, what, what do you say, about an hour of play? Maybe an hour and a half? Yeah, not long. Yeah, like and then you get 2,000 points of glory. So that's, that's pretty cool. Like, I didn't even think of that. I didn't know that it, um, it actually gave you a huge reward, even though it should. It makes sense that it does. And it's cool that it doesn't give you, like, just straight up, hey, this is your drops from winning this tournament. It allows you to go to a, um, a vendor or maybe save up that glory points and actually spend it. That's, that's a cool system, I think. Um, yeah, I maybe... Impressed. Yeah, and but these items can't be brought back to PvE. They're just PvP items, right? No, and these can be... You can dump these in a locker, so you can kind of trade them between different characters if you want, because you could get something oh, cool. that's not for your class or whatever. Right, so so when they first talked about structures, and it wasn't really clear to me, um, you do jump in with your PvE character. So as soon as you make a, a PvE character, or as soon as you get past the first quest, so you'll probably be around level 2 or 3, um, you get the unlo- the option to go to the Mists and therefore go to the World vs. World or Structure PvP. Um, you go into it with your PvE character, but you're changed in appearance entirely. And what I thought was the case was when you unlock max level gear or level 80 gear in PvE, then you can bring it into PvP because obviously there'll be equivalency. But it, lo- it sounds like you always look a bit, you always look different in the Mists. You always have like a PvP set of gear with appearance and stuff. Can you, can, can you confirm or deny this or do you have any idea one way or the other i think yeah i think there's two different sets so no okay. matter what you so have in world vs world and pve you you'll look right so yeah exactly so in world vs world and pve you'd have your pve things that you've earned through unlocking in world vs world or dungeons or um a event chains in pve but in pvp structured pvp you always have a pvp set which you unlock by doing structured pvp yeah so that's a, that's an interesting system I, i'll give you that um, what else did you do, just quickly, because we're already at an hour and a half? I uh, played a bit of PvE in that new zone near Lion's Arch. Uh, oh, cool. Because I, I was playing by myself, the, the, I felt like the hearts like, kind of took too long to do. And it got a kind of bit Yeah, bored. and that's pretty much why I haven't really... Because like, New Barama was there as well, and Shinboy from last week was there, and you're, 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 you got into Lion's Arch as well. And Tarkin, I think you went to Lion's Arch as well, right? I got to the back of the first beta... <laughs> Yeah, so and the, the thing is, like the reason I haven't really asked for too much in the way of descriptions is um it appears it sounds from pretty much all sources like it's kind of unfinished. It doesn't like it sounds like the heart quests aren't particularly engaging and the um dynamic events there are pretty much few and far between. Which what what do you what are you guys thoughts? I'm gonna let everyone chime in this one. Um New Brahma, what are your thoughts of the Lions Arch area? Um Lions Arch as in like the explorable area. Yeah, the explorable it. area. Yeah. Um so that was what's the name of it? Something Plains? Yes, yeah, something plains. Viridian? I, I can't remember. Yeah, Dindara something like that. Plains. Uh Grandin or whatever. So it, it again it's a level what, thirty twenty five to thirty five zone, I believe. Yep. What right. Did, right. And um I compared to the other zone, I felt like there were substantially less dynamic events and it well the and a lot of the dynamic events felt very repetitive. Like a lot of them were you know, the only reason that it felt like there were that many works because it was constantly going on over and over again. And then this is I really think, concerning to me, to be honest. Like and, the fact that um, these starting areas are so nice and like well honed to large extent and have really like large diversity. What what was what are examples of? I'll I'll, I'll switch it over to Turkey. Right. Um, Turkey. Okay. What, what are some examples of the dynamic events you saw in um, the? I think it's Desia Plains, or is that not it? The plains no, in front of Lions Arch. No. Oh, that's Gendarin, Gendarin Fields. Fields. Yeah, Gendarin Fields. 
or something. Yeah. Um, like I didn't actually check out much of that because I went through the other areas, the Norn and the Char, and okay. finished them up. But right. um, so that, um, also that's where the Vigil headquarters is. In case people want to know, you know, there's the three no big things. That, you know how there's the three major things you can join: the Diamond, Diamond nope. and Priory. Priory. Nope, I haven't um, read about it. Don't want to know about it till the game comes out. You've not read the books. <laughs> Uh, I have read the second, like the the Edge of Destiny, but I haven't read oh, the others. Okay. Ah, oh, you nerds! You fucking casual. <laughs> I thought you liked fantasy. You don't really like. Fantasy. I like good You're... fantasy. Those books are not good fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, but well, if Tarkin hasn't explained, I'll let you do a noob. Um, what what, what are some examples with Diamond um, Quest? This is, uh, let's see. So basically, on the very uh western side of the map so you're coming in from the human zone that's where the centaurs are and multiple human settlements right um and as you move eastwards it becomes closer to the norn area so the furthest east area is an ice cave full of ettins and those mole people i forgot what they're called uh, yeah. uh dredge yeah you're the dredge and there there was one really fun one where the dredge you're basically defending an area because a giant uh dredge APC with this giant drill comes, you know, drilling out from under, and then that's you're defeating cool. waves. Which is like a mechanical dredge. thing. Right, right. That's like find? a really cool one. And there's this sudden huge boss dredge you have to fight at the end. That was that's fun. awesome. Wait, yeah, so this that a, was this awesome. sounds pretty good then. Well, but what's what's wrong with the east, area? Then? Eastwards, it's repetition of centaur defending quests. So you're defending town from centaurs. You're walking oh, around man. killing centaurs, etc. I thought that, um, I thought that, I thought the centaur and as, and issue the was center, mainly a human thing. Uh, well, to the the eastern area is a humans. It's mostly human settlements. You mean western area? Because the one humans oh, in the west too. The yeah. west, yeah. Sorry, that's right. Oh, gotcha. Okay. All right, cool. So okay. yeah, so the dredge and, part and the awesome stuff happens near um, the northern area. And then near the center, the there's pirates. It's lots of pirate related quests. Wait, but isn't Lions Arch? How is that a bad thing? That that sounds uh, awesome. It's it's not particular. <laughs> like I didn't find them interesting. It was killed, kill they... x amount of pirates. Yeah. yeah. Oh, More the actual pirates. the actual events themselves weren't interesting. Yeah. Defend town from pirates. Well, the cool thing about pirates is they're air- pirates are everything. Like, they're Asura. It's not just humans. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> there were giant Norn pirates and char pirates. <laughs> the char pirates were a bit silly. Considering but, yeah. that a pirate uniform is something you can get on the gem store, would you yeah. say a pirate uniform is worth it? Does it look badass? Um, well, like, because the pirate uniform is irrelevant to my, you know, destiny of becoming the best cook in Tyria, I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> But you could be a pirate chef. What do the pirates look like? <laughs> yeah, uh, well, yeah, just a chef with a pirate's hat. I'd, I'd rather specialize, you know. Or a pirate with a chef's hat. Oh, that's true. I, I just didn't wear the chef's hat. I just wore aviators. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why they had aviators. <laughs> it's so cool. You're not a pilot. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> yeah. I'm a ch- I'm, um, I, I fly the giant cake. And well, up to the north. And the north is, of the, course, the crypt. Um... What what were your experiences with that with that store with that area? Did, did you have something similar to Noob where you found a lot of what was like uninspired or? Yeah, I didn't get to stick enough to around to see the event like any decent event chains like he described. Oh, the so. the dredge stuff, right? Yeah, so I kind of ran around for a bit and then went to the island and killed some pirates. Yeah, I wish I I saw more of the dredge stuff. That seemed interesting, but I ran out of time. Yeah, and it's 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 kind of sad that it's only in one half or mean one third of the area if you if you're splitting it vertically. Mm, right. Um, it looks yeah, nice. so, so the center like, stuff right. is just boring. Well, that said, I did not expl- uh, fully explore because there was like a cave area full of pirates. I did not go in there, but um, <laughs> uh, were you yeah. by yourself? Uh no, I was playing with. I, I forgot who I was Acrid? playing with. It was Acrid? Was it? I was Acrid. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and if you don't know Acrid, he's he's a mod on the Mumble server. Um, any great guy, great like the nicest guy. Um, but yeah, but uh, yeah, no, that's that's. I guess it's. Okay, would you say of the areas, would you say it's better than most of the starting areas, or do you think it's more boring? Or what, um, what do you feel about? It? They're different. I'll just say that they're each <laughs> different, and they're all special, <laughs> and I love them all. Okay. <laughs> there. Uh, Echo, do you have any more concrete opinions? I feel like I have to go like explore oh, yeah. this one properly because like I the found... visual thing looks badass. Yeah, uh, right. there's probably some cool skill point things around as well because that's. Uh, some cool caves or just interesting underwater areas. I don't know, but yeah, I need to, okay. I need to explore it more and see. It's actually cool. And did, you, did you, all, all three of you? Um, sorry to leave it, Ros. Rosen, do you have, do you have anything to input? 
I, here? As far as Lion's Arch goes, no, I've just been using it as a in between point. Yeah, same. For the, uh, I don't want to see it. I don't know anything about it. I'm saving it for release for myself, I guess. Yeah. There's this what? huge castle northeast. Yeah. So, what do you guys think of Lion's Arch? Um, tar- like Tarkin and, and Noob and it's Echo? Quite. Un- it was underwhelming. Like the bid I saw. Like I didn't see all of oh. it. I only went to the crafting area because you know I was okay. just going around for herbs and I wanted to deposit the herbs somewhere. <laughs> That's where I deposit the herbs. In your quest to be the master cook, in, in, the, yeah. the greatest cook interior, right? The greatest cook interior. Yeah. Oh, did did you find? Did you see the um? Because on Gilwa's to Wiki, they actually have a bunch of like a breakdown of what you can do with the um cooking materials and, yeah. and cooks can actually are pretty much one of the only big modifiers for magic find it's yep. kind of crazy so it's pretty awesome so i might i'd rather not need be some cheater. of your services i'd rather be an original cook what yeah that no i'll definitely check that out <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no, magic find uh i think you guys have like 10 minute buffs to magic find that you can uh craft and cook mm-hmm. in very commons um and stuff like that it's, it's pretty pretty awesome but so your thoughts on on lion's arch are pretty minimal and echo did you get a good chance to have a look at lion's arch yeah i had a good look at it last beta as well i think the underwater part like and the underwater part where it shows uh you know the old lion's arch is pretty cool if you play that the, is that sounds so game. cool <laughs> uh, that sounds a, amazing there's a cool tower where you jump off and into the water this, yeah, they put yep. some effort into it, but it feels kind of kind of messy because I guess well, it's supposed to. How big to... is it? Like, is it bigger than Divinity's Reach, or is it like what's the relative size? Of that? It's, like it's, it's definitely than Divinity's yeah, Reach. It's probably about a size of like one of the quarters of Divinity's Reach or something. Yeah, it's Whoa, a, okay. no, no, like it's, it's bigger quarters. than a quarter. Yeah. It's about, it's about uh, one, it's a two to two-ish quarters. That's still much smaller than Divinity's Reach. Yeah. Right, but then again, this is not a homesteading area. Divinity's Reach is also goddamn huge. Yeah, yeah. it's it's yeah. quite oh, yeah. it's quite big, big but yeah. um, it's got a lot of hidden areas. That I'm just gonna make it underwater section. Yes. Does the underwater section go under the city as well, or is it mainly just like its own kind of area? There's a there's like an underwater tunnel you can explore, which is only really a shortcut. I thought there'd be something cool behind there, but there's like a weird <laughs> pirate cave, and it feel, it feels oh, cool. messy, but it's supposed to feel like that, I guess, because it's kind of like a refugee. Well, not refugee. Right, yeah, and by messy, yeah. you mean more like eclectic. Um, there's a, there's a lot of difference in like a in the art style between it and Divinity's Reach. For example, Divinity's Reach is like all like uh, medieval and all like very um, not samey, but there's there's a consistency to the design of all the architecture there. But if you go to Divinity's Reach, it's like shit's made out of broken ships and like you mean like Lion's things Arch, like you just said Divinity's Reach. Oh yeah, sorry. Things if you go to the um, Lion's Arch, it's made of broken ships. Like literally, the bridge is made of broken ships. There's like um right. they're they're, out, they're uh, shop fronts from what i've heard because i haven't seen it myself um are like nailed together and stuff like is that the kind of feeling you got from the place enchanted yeah that's pretty much it which is cool <laughs> yeah right. yeah, yeah. No, it's, did you did you like it uh it's i have a i get some performance issues there as well which is odd yeah so. it's quite laggy yeah so really once so they maybe new, did, did you find much in the way of low Oh yeah, yeah, yeah it was it? it was very blue. As in, I got a lot of blue. Uh, I like I moved to my laptop and I stopped getting blue screens. So I think it's just my computer. Oh, but, uh, right, gotcha. Yeah. Blue by blue screens. That, that yeah. that's these are issues that I swear very few people have. Dude, right? I, I I feel sad. I want because... ArenaNet to cater their game specifically for me, <laughs> and they're not doing that. Well, the, in the b- yeah, process I'm... of tweaking it. Definitely, and I, I feel that the pro, the performance has gotten better, uh, beta to beta. Yeah, it definitely better. has. It definitely has yeah. gotten better. And um, I think I want to touch on what Kale, sorry, Tarkin did, uh, and I, one last question to end out the show, uh, because they discussed on Guildcast. And I want to do the same thing here. But uh, Tarkin, what what did you do during the betas? You, you were with me for most of the time. Most of the time, but when I was in War vs. the World, yes. Hey, but... Discuss how much fun we had in Ascalon Catacombs. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, gosh. we already got like twenty minutes of that last week. <laughs> that was horrendous. Failing to get into it was like shitty thirty party, minutes of like, server why issues. is partying not working? <laughs> yeah, they just couldn't get in. By we themselves. walked in; it didn't work. Sorry, Come they couldn't on. get in as a team. I wanted to play. Yeah. 
Um, but I think the area I really want to talk to you about was because um, we we both did a lot of world versus world, which we'll talk about eventually. I'm sorry, guys, but <laughs> not this episode. Um, but we also did a bunch of uh, Kessex Hills, and I think you got you actually saw a lot more of the human starting area than I did because you, you said something about zombies, and I was intrigued. I said, "Hey, save it for the show. Um, tell me, tell me what you mean. What, what do you see in the human starting area that involved these things called zombies?" Well, okay, they're not called zombies. They're called the Risen. <laughs> um, yeah, they're from the... Which is the same thing. Yeah. Like, to no, be not. honest. I mean, I'm okay, seeing... Yeah. Zombies are undead. Those Risen have been turned by... Um, what's his no, face? no, some of them were the dead. The... Oh, okay. And oh. returned back to life. <laughs> I thought others were, like, completely corrupted or something. Um, I think that's the... Wait, well, so I thought the, the others were the dudes on Lost. <laughs> anyway, wait, yeah, yeah. The, what are the risen? What do they look like? Who are they? What are they? They they look like um, drowned people, and like all all that entails. Oh, okay. it's, it's not just people. It's like Asura, Asura, yeah, Asura Nora, humans, Nord. I did not see any child. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I didn't. Oh, see they're any like child. the drowned dead from The Witcher. Yeah, pretty much. Sure. And like all the like plants and stuff that gather on. People. Right, so they're like algae growing off them, yeah. and like they're they're semi desiccated and that kind of stuff. Yep. That's kind of cool. And um, they're attacking a Silvari encampment. <laughs> oh, you got to see the Silvari encampment. Yes. You, oh, I if, keep missing out on it. What what, what level was this area? It's it southwest like, Kessex Hills. It's level twenty twenty three two. Oh, it's twenty five. It's twenty two. Yeah. Uh, the risen no, no, level twenty three. It's, it's like twenty two ish. Yeah. Right. All right. And, and so, I'm and they attack accident. like zombies. They. <laughs> oh, cool. Masses upon masses. Oh god! I did that event twice, and each time I only did it with one other person. It took a long time. I, I could not <laughs> handle it by myself. Because like, like I just never ran into other people. It's there's just so many risen. Is it, because yeah, a lot of people just didn't get to that area of Castle Hill, which is why it could be cool talking about here. So wait, get, what was the dynamic event? Like, what, give me an idea of how this thing happened. All right, so I, Tarkin, you want to do this? Yeah. Okay. First off, um, the event is the renowned task is. Uh, cure the people of disease there because because for some reason they've lived there so long that the area is now diseased. Whoa! Wait, so is this in like the, the far west? Is that like the southwest? Is there water? Is it waterfront? Yeah, or? it is. It is completely surrounded Bottom west. Water. And like, okay, cool. They're on a small island. So the open sea? No, it's, oh, it's more like awesome. a lake or something, or a river. Okay, cool. And um, all right. Oh, yeah, you can see that river system on the um, on Crider if you look at yep. the maps. I, I, I know. And all, all the Silvari so there going? are diseased. And you're meant to cure them. In the middle of that, a dynamic event occurs. The Risen are attacking. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Then, the, the, then, then, them off. then shit goes real. It's just like, what? <laughs> I'm in the middle of curing these people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. And, is that, and so, it's like, so do they come out of the water? Or yes, like, they come the, out of the water and attack you. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Like Pirates of the Caribbean style. Out of the pretty water. much, yeah. Dead bodies. That's pretty awesome. Wait, did, did, Noob, do you have anything to elaborate? Um, so basically there's that, and then there's a second one where it's basically you have to go into the Risen area, and there's basically these Risen Warlocks or something like that you have to kill, and that's the second part of that quest. I don't know if there's a third part because I didn't really get into that area. Because it's um, still only with one dude. Pardon? Oh, yeah. That, yeah. that guy left by the time I got there and I just died. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I did get the 100% in that area, and that's what I, that's what I really cared about. The nice. Perfect one hundred percent in Kessex Hill. Plus, you get items. I'm shaking my head. Yeah, items and monies. Is that the place that enchanted? Sixty silver. Is Kessex <laughs> Hill is the one that has like the inflated reward, or is that somewhere else? There's somewhere where you get like a load of money for finishing, and it's not. Oh, it's actually scaled for your level. So when you um finish all the uh, which is kind of cool. Like so, what happens is when you go to a map, any new area or any area in general. Um, you, when you're loading in, it actually shows you, and then on the top left-hand corner of the map, if you actually open the map, um, how many, uh, I think it was, renowned quests, so no, renowned events. Um, waypoints. Points of interest and, and skill points. And waypoints. Yeah. And waypoints. And if you unlock, if you see all of them, so if you do all the renowned quests, if you find all the waypoints, if you do all the skill points, and you can see all the points of interest, which is, I think is the hardest part because you kind of have to go to the middle of nowhere for some of them, um, you get a reward. And it comes up and, and above your mini map is a little chest that like kind of like a like a UI element. It's not like chest on the ground anymore, like it was in the last beta. It's on the mini map. Like a, yep. a chest comes up in the bottom right hand corner of your screen, and you, you click it and you get rewards. Um, 
which is kind of i guess it's you should, guess you it's should cool. if, it, if it does scale you should probably do it like you should save those up yeah because like, you get a really second. huge reward because like yeah. a Tarkin for getting the char starting area with his human i think you got what like 50 silver or something like that? it was huge yeah it was a huge amount yeah i got 60 silver 60 for silver. Kessex hills that's yeah. crazy and you guys were both around the same level so 20 20 something yeah, no, but i, I assume if you did it at lower something. levels they wouldn't yeah i was 30 something when i finished Kessex. well there you go so even if I do like a low level, I assume you won't get a bigger experience bonus, and which is kind of cool because it's encouraging you to go back to these low level areas if you're really high level. Because if you if you max them out at a high level, you get a shitload of reward for it, and also it doesn't pressure you because there's no if if the reward didn't go up with time, there's a, there's something to say that hey, as soon as you get to an area, you should kind of max it out because you want that reward now instead of what it means less later. Um, so it's like a double hit there of awesomeness because you go into an area, you can do whatever you want there. There's no pressure to complete it. But, but you can come like back there to get a huge. You're reward. like, I better leave this single renowned quest for like just not do it, so I don't. Oh, if you if you want to just it. if if you yeah. want to just completely like, metagame. Yeah, it'd, it'd be just like doing like a legendary defender of Ascalon, where you do all of the quests, but you don't take the reward, so you can level up that final nineteen to twenty in the original Guild Wars. That's bullshit. I, but, I, that's but it's, it's a differences. way people will play the game. That's how I would do it, probably. <laughs> I, I, I want to maximize my rewards. <laughs> I do it the way I said. We should just like have fun and then come back later. But I guess that's a way to do MMOs it. MMOs are not fun. It's living. <laughs> nice. So, Rawson, did you end up seeing any of the um, the human starting area at all, or does it mainly char? It was mostly char. I I only went over to human starting area to play with a friend, and even then, right. that was stuff I'd already seen before. Cool. And so, so just to round out this this risen event, um, how did it end? Did you did you see the end of it, Tarkin? Um, what do you mean at the if end? you beat them back like, for that, did you, did you fend off? The, yeah, uh, they just go back to the water. Be- yeah, and and then that's how the next and the next step is clear out, clear them out. Oh, and and you, and you keep and that's the one where Noob was talking about. That he didn't end up doing. Yep. So that's yep. an underwater cave system. Did you get? Did you see the front of it, or did you? Uh, like, did, did you start it in any way, shape, or form? I didn't Noob get or Turkey? I didn't well, get to uh, that point. There's no, un- you know, you just keep on walking. Basically, okay. like the way they do it in Guild Wars is these NPCs just tip you off. I heard there's something over there, and then you just listen to what the NPC says, and then you go over there. Oh, there's a dynamic event. Okay, that's how I did it. Yeah, the, the, those right. NPCs were chattering, and I'm like, oh, okay. But but this like follow on event after the the reason of it yeah happened. yeah that's only available after you finish the reason. And, oh yeah, did you ever finish it, or did you not see the end? Oh, I, I, I finished the defense. Yeah, defending the village, but um, right. Oh, and oh, so I, actually, no, pushback? I failed defend. I failed to defend the village. I had to retake ah. it. Okay, um, right. Okay, so you yeah. did it from the opposite direction. Yeah. And, and when when you had to retake it, did they have the whole town? Like, were they were they throughout the whole town, or like what was it? They they captured the whole town. All of the people were on the ground dead. And, uh, oh. Yeah. Well, you, once you killed all of them, they automatically revive, so it didn't really. Matter. Hey, I revived <laughs> but, uh, them before taking the town. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. So, Kael is uh, Tarkin to the real way, the man's way. But you didn't get, you didn't push them back, Tarkin. So you didn't do the full job. I am not like yeah. a solo hero here, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're a Whatever. guardian. You can do that kind of stuff, yeah, I'm right? A guardian. <laughs> You're both guardians. You guys suck. I- you know, I'm not very good doing? at playing. So so lazy. Yeah. <laughs> my fingers were broken okay so fuck it. yeah <laughs> they were crushed um, in a nuclear accident there's another piece and i'll just leave it as a hint for anyone who wants instead of spoiling it for people i guess we didn't spoil too much because none of these <gasps> assholes finished the event chain so it's good so you can you can experience the Silvari encampment and the risen stuff in the south what western corner of the Kessex hills area for yourself um the another part of that would be that i need to talk about uh, am I here or did I drop? Did I drop the call? You're here. You're still here. Whoa! The other phone line rang and I didn't drop. Anyway, um, so yeah, A miracle. You, you can head over to the Kessex Hill area for yourself. Um, but the part I, I'll, I'll leave there for anyone to experience for themselves. Aside from that, would be the centaur stuff. So in most of the human starting area, you're versing the centaurs, right? And it's pretty boring most of the time. It's like hold against a camp of them or that kind of stuff. Um, there's just like waves of centaurs come in or you're taking the, the centaur camps, which is just kind of like uh, holding a point long enough for a meter to fill and then you hold the next point and so on and so forth. Kind of boring. Um, that's that's in the first half of this human study. But when you get down to Kessex Hills, 
and you're talking to centaurs, I mean, so you're versing the centaurs, actually steps up a significant notch. And I'll leave it for you to discover, but there's stuff like assaulting huge base camps of them and taking out siege equipment for the centaurs and stuff like that. So it actually steps up the conflict significantly once you get to Kessex Hills. Oh, so, right. hmm. yep. Oh, no, no, not about that. You can finish. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I was about to finish. I was, I was going to say, so the Risen and the, the centaur um, eleva- escalated combat uh, scenarios and the, uh, what was it, the Crate. event I talked about last week with the... Oh yeah, the crate as well. There's some pretty cra- crazy crate stuff that happens there, and there's the um, bit with the Tengu last week that I talked about. So much stuff to ha- check out in the human starting area. You should do it for yourself. We won't go too much into it. I won't bring it up at it because I think it's getting a bit late for us to do more impressions cast. Again, next week we'll probably end up doing a world versus world, uh, more of a, like a, a discussion rather than impressions, and we'll talk about tactics and that kind of stuff because I do want to have a talk about world versus world. God damn it! Right. So- um, what yeah. were you going to say, Noob, just All to right, round okay, it quickly. up? So, um, in this stretch test, go in, in Gendarn play, or Fields. There's this mansion of this Asura, like this rich Asura. There's a renowned quest where you have to clean up his house. Basically, uh, behind his house, there will be like a small alleyway between another building. And in there, there are four spider eggs. Destroy all of those spider eggs. Just and then see what happens? Yep. It's uh, awesome. try to do it when there's the dynamic event of the house being attacked by uh, those pirates. It'll make things a lot funner. Cool. <laughs> that, that sounds like a great pro tip. And we'll probably bring these up, uh, these recommendations that go up again when the next beat is over. Uh, oh, if you die, up. it's not my fault. Fuck you. Uh, we'll do another impression. Uh, sorry, recommendations cast because it was really successful from last time. So listen to us then. But before we end the show, because I, I we're successful. Around, it was really successful. Yeah, we did, we did like wow. double normal listener count on that one. Um, which, I don't know, I guess you can you can put it up to maybe double of two is still four people, right? But, um, so be, be, before we end out the show, I want to discuss this, because I discussed it on Guildcast, and I think it's pretty cool to bring it to this forum. Um, I thought how we just did that. How many beta events do you think you can hand, like, you, you can accept or you'll still be interested in before you're just like, fuck it, I just want you guys to release it, and it'll start being a detriment to their efforts? Like, I how want many more do you really seeing it now. I don't want to. So win. you're saying you don't. Wait, reasonably, win. reasonably, I will. Uh, let's say two more beta weekends, and then that's just. It. Then you I just want lose them interest, to right? release the sewer stuff either next or the next next, and then just finish it off. Just right. really. And, and be, beyond that, you, I, I actually agree. Like one or two more, and then beyond that, they're actually really starting right. to be kind of productive in that they're losing all the hype. Like I, I can still get hyped for a beta if it's coming up next month. Um, I won't be waking up in the middle of the night for this stress test because obviously it's the ending event again which we'll discuss next week screw you it's four but, hours um, of playtime yeah, could... four hours <laughs> <laughs> but um i don't see myself being like too into it if they just keep doing right beta weekend There's events one month apart two days our patience they can test before yeah. you know a bomb blows off in the arena net offices exactly and, I, and to be clear i prefer them like for example if they're released in november I'd actually prefer if they go dark on the game for a long time and the announcers that they're doing so no. than to keep having these beta events. Because it's, it's this weird influx of getting excited for a beta, only two days of play, these characters may be deleted, that kind of stuff is just just wearing. Tar- Rawson, what are, you, what are your thoughts? I, I'm going to go ahead and agree with Noob in that like you know, one or two more I could handle, but even now I'm starting to kind of go like, yeah, I get it. I like the game. Just hurry the <laughs> fuck up, get it out of the door, so that way I can play it without knowing that you know my character is going to be white. That's the big thing. Like um, one of the things that Gary Gannon brought up on again the Guildcast was um, which you should listen to because it's awesome. I shouldn't be plugging another podcast on here. Yeah. Um, what the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> we need to be the best podcast in all. Yeah. Of um, he said that. What, what would you guys' reaction be? If it's still a beta, but instead of doing a weekend, they actually do like a two-week stretch or a three-week stretch. Oh, then I might as well... I'm fine with that. I'm just playing the game at that point. <laughs> but your character could still be wiped at the end. I don't care. I, I just want, I don't want to be waiting a month in between these betas only to play for two days. And then, yeah, and then to be let off the hook again. And, yeah. Um, was, Enchanted, what are your thoughts? Um, I think that they obviously still have a bit of work to do, so... I don't. Re- I don't want it to come out and have like, get to the end of the, you know lower l- the higher level areas and have big like lagging like shit because it's unoptimized. I mean, at the moment, it's not even right. using your graphics card. Like it's running purely off 
Oh, it's CPU. Yeah, it was, it's doing a bit better than it was before, but it's still not there yet in terms of the optimization with graphics. I agree. But um, they are. But yeah, like so a, one there is a there's a closed beta that's like constantly running all the time now. Where, right. But they're like you're paid. Playing? No, no, I, I, I've tried, but I'm not getting oh, into that. Yeah. But that's where people got the previews <laughs> for like Asura and stuff like that. But um, yeah, yeah, two or three since I'd be happy with. But I mean, it's going to come out at the end. You know, it's going to come out at the very latest December, and we're already more than halfway through the year. So it's yeah, too much but longer to again, wait, that's but... that's five more beta wins, guys. Yeah, I think but, they think oh they probably want to. <laughs> probably want to avoid the like November rush of everything else if they want to get the name out there to you know more mainstream yeah. people. Exactly. Right. Well, but, but so yeah, generally, yeah, yeah, you know all those great games coming out this year that we saw at E3, like oh, Assassin's Creed Three, Last, Last of Us. There's a there's a couple of really good. There's a, there's a bunch of really Last of Us games. is not coming out this year. It's next year. I, I is yep. it next year? No, yeah, it's next year. It's confirmed 2013. Oh, okay, right. So then, finish Assassins. And oh boy! Wow, the expansion. Oh, oh boy! I'm I'm keen. Oh, Dishonored looks good. Dishonored looks really good. That's October. Um, then. Anyway, um, getting back to Guild Wars um, Two. Yeah, Tarkin. Oh, <laughs> you guys are thinking beta is more along the lines of like pre-release. Uh, like no. everything's quite fun. I, I, I'll let fun you finish, one. but I, I disagree. Go on. Because they are actually using the beta event to get rid of bugs, so that more yeah. easily. Hmm. Yet you're all thinking, you're pl- you're all playing the beta as if it was basically a pre-release, like most it's mostly yeah, final. So so what, what's your so do you think that they should um, just keep doing beta events until they think it's finished and just put the game out whenever they feel like it? You don't, you don't really think there's any pressure here. Um, I do think that um, they really shouldn't do more, it's too much more. But um... <laughs> well, how how many do you have left in you? Uh, I'm thinking along the region of two to three more. After that, I'm I'm finished trying okay. to look for bugs well, for them. Yeah, so we we actually I, I think you're wrong in your assumption that we 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 don't realize that it's it's for it's a beta test. So we I'm are not saying that you don't realize that. I'm, we are I'm doing thinking that you're playing bugs. like it's a a full game. True, and on that on that note, like I've already stated that next beta event, I'm going to be um, putting aside PvE and PvP and just doing more crafting. Um, and then just do whatever I feel like instead of just nailing well, WWE well, and PvP. To, to be like, perfectly honest with you, most people do play MMO betas just like that. Uh, well, just 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 play as if it's normal. Yeah, just play as if it's normal because right. for the most part, and I mean this is a, a lot of them that have come out. It's basically just a uh, it's just a demo. Right, exactly, and, and that's what a lot of people see it like. Um, and you know, even though I, we realize that it's a beta and we are supporting all this stuff. Um, it's still a form of hype cycle, you know. It's it's still generating hype. Uh, it's just, like again, as I said, our pre um, last beta it, broadcast was really successful because a lot of people were really pumped, really interested in the event. But that can only happen a certain number of times before if they keep doing these betas and we get excited about it because obviously we're going to play the beta. Well, I'm going to play the beta no matter what, even though there's a five or ten more, even though I won't be happy about it. I'll oh yeah, play. of course I'll play the video. I'll, I'll, I'll be pissed, but I'll be playing Yeah, the I'll beta. be pissed, <laughs> but I'll play. And I'll still get excited about it and that hype cycle is still there. Like, they can't keep doing it though because it's the same essentially like, not thing everyone's every time. like a balls out crazy fan. They, they, yeah. they have like patience that that's being tested here. Exactly. And this this whole thing every month where like a, a random person on the internet will say, hey, all these guys are getting excited about Guild Wars 2, okay? Two days later, it dies out. And they're like, huh. And a month later, a bunch of people get excited about Guild Wars 2 for two days again. It's not it's not giving you a very good impression. And it's not... As, yeah, it, it, as Snoop said, it's just testing everyone's patience in the end, in, in my opinion. Um, Tarkin, what, what, do you have any real response? Like... You as well as have said that you'd probably only really be appreciative of maybe two or three maximum more beta events. What do you feel it does? this is doing in terms of the hype for Guild Wars 2? Do you think it's being detrimental? Well, I've been trying to stay away from like forums to keep my hype just limited to just those beta events and not continue along. Ah, right. um, so, personally, I've just... It, I'm fine with how they're handling things right now. But um, right, okay. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> we'll see. 
Um, Enchanted, do you have any anything further to say? Don't be on what your statements before. Yeah, uh, do, 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 you, do you feel it's being detrimental? Uh, it's pro. It, it, well, it's definitely you know helping them development wise, but you know in terms of PR and marketing, it's not the best way to do things. I don't know. Maybe they might up the frequency of how how often they do them, or they might lengthen them as we get closer to release. I mean, the, yeah. we're already having a three day start weekend or whatever that is for people who pre ordered. So oh yeah, they had they had there start be, weekend stuff. There might be something similar to Old Republic where they opened up up for a little bit longer, like before the yeah, game, and that so. can counteract some of the things. Like it won't be, it wouldn't just be a two day experience which everyone gets excited for. It'd be like a, a simmering event where a lot of people like just consistently just talk buzzing about Guild Wars two, not too loudly for a bit, and then dying down again. It's a, probably a better way to go than this, just these monthly two day events. I, I, was, I, I, I somewhat agree. I just hope launch is smooth and doesn't. Crash. like old republic oh, was yeah. actually surprisingly decent ish but yeah yeah hopefully yeah. It's too bad that. the game wasn't decent <laughs> womp, and with womp. that um with that cracker from rawson we'll end the show <laughs> um go on the table for uh plugs uh i'm just me first i'm, I'm self cynic this is the lincoln cast you can check us out on twitter at the lincoln cast and message us anything you may any ruminations or thoughts at the lincoln cast at gmail.com or also, you can post in the uh, forum threads I make in both Guild Wars 2 Guru and the Giant Bomb forums, of course. Um, next up on the list, Rawson, do you have anything to plug? Not this week. Not yet? Question Not mark? yet. <laughs> Still building. <laughs> New Verama. Um, I'd like to plug my restaurant, my guild restaurant, named La Cuisine again. Um, I'm, yep. I'm, I'm accepting. No one's no one's going to buy your food. One gold no one for a possible reservation. <laughs> no, assuming no the one's restaurant does exist. <laughs> no one is going to ask you for food. In this <laughs> I might no when one. I need some magic fine. But uh, turkey, how many plugs? Nah. Although, ooh, Quagged likes you. <laughs> this week is really <laughs> poor, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't um, have Duran's Twitch TV to plug, so we yeah, really and or Shin Boy's website and stuff like yeah. that. But hey, whatever. Uh, see, the rest of us are just freaking losers, apparently. Um, Encha- Enchanted <laughs> I like Echo. I know you have a website Facebook profile. Add me as a friend. I want to be friends with everyone. <laughs> Enchanted Echo. Do you have anything to plug? Uh, the website I write for digital digitalgordium.com. It's kind of under re- reconstruction at the moment. So spell it out for us, by the way. Uh, digital. So D I. Yep, as normal. Yep. yep. And, and Gaudium. Gaudium is Latin, so it's G A U D I U M dot com. Dot com. Cool. And so it's under construction at the moment, is it? Well, oh, it's there, but yeah, it's kind of just there to serve as a. to get PR <laughs> stuff happening. Request oh, cool. the betas and stuff like that, but it's, yeah, some changes with and, and if Yeah, and if anyone does recognize him, he's the guy who um, got on the forums a while ago and posted an interview uh, with the Guild Wars 2 devs, right? Who was it with again? Eric Flannan. And and is that on YouTube now, or is is that a new website? How can people catch that? It's YouTube and site, so search for it. Cool. And with that, we'll round out the show. Uh, Thanks for listening, and catch us next week. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Yeah. <laughs>